Welcome back to the show and thank you for returning back to the channel, the podcast where we discuss personal finance, happiness, money, and advice. Today, I'm joined by not one, but two very, very special esteemed guests. We have Myron Gaines, the host of number one men's podcast, Fresh and Fit. Myron Gaines, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you for having me. We have Sneeko, everyone knows, very popular uh, ex-YouTuber, now Rumbler. Uh, before you got, I, that, that, that's the pronoun. Yes, thank you. That's the that's the preface. Basically, before you were banned, you had over a million subscribers on YouTube. It's like two million combined with the both channels. Two million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. On Twitch, you had a lo- very large viewership. On Twitch, I only lasted like two days before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you were banned on both platforms. And Twitter and TikTok, wow. but uh, got the Twitter back. Thank you, Elon. Oh really? Yeah. Nice, sick. Um, yeah, we get ba- got banned on TikTok several times as well. Yeah, even me. Yeah. You know what's crazy? What did you do? Bro, I didn't do anything, but I had a video where I asked somebody if he would convert to Islam, and they banned that video. Oh, that's why. Oh, you you wow. can't talk about anything positive. It has to be yeah. negative. You need to be twerking. You need to be worshiping Satan yep. and changing your gender on TikTok. Pretty much. That's okay. the only way you'll be allowed on there. Yeah. I mean, that's what it seemed like. Honestly, I don't know why TikTok and... Bro, they don't have any appeal system, and they're like... It's, they, they, they say they'll appeal it, but they never come through yeah. with any results. Unless you're a thought or doing some degenerate stuff, they're not going to... Yeah. No. And I heard from people that actually work at TikTok that any... Anything that gets reported with my name or Tate's name, they immediately delete. It doesn't even matter. They don't review it. It's just gone. Damn. Yeah. yeah. All, my, all the Tate videos, especially even, not even deleted, but all of them just um, shadow banned completely. Like the views, like a video of me alone is like, you know, maybe 15, 20,000 views. And then me with Tate, dead. Zero. Like like 200 or 100, you know? They're doing everything they can to sense from right yeah. now. It's ridiculous. And I think it's also because there's like this thing where, I mean, I don't know how true it is, but they're saying that TikTok... In China, it's all about videos. You haven't heard this? It's all no, positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah, uplifting. Yeah. There, there's none yeah, of this gender exactly. fluidity nonsense. Exactly. It's, all it's all like inspirational they reward science. The people who are like really like putting out like good messages or like really like working on some creative stuff, and then for the U.S. No, it's all one big psyop. They're using it to destroy the West from the inside out. It's genius, yeah. Trojan horse. Yeah, yeah, sick. But I mean, disgusting. Yep. Pretty and, smart and, though. And, and and they get a bunch of your, they collect a bunch of your data as well. Everything. Have you ever like looked at the user agreement? I saw Joe Rogan TikTok? Made Yeah, video yeah, it's crazy. wild. Like any phone or any device you log in from, they just immediately start pulling data from it anywhere you log in from, from TikTok. Yeah, it's one apps. of the most invasive apps. There have is. you ever downloaded the app? I don't have it, but I downloaded like once or twice. And then every single time, I had, it's like ask app not to track, ask location, Damn. ask your contact list, ask your birth yeah, certificate, yeah, everything. social, everything. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I honestly for me, I just deleted it recently, because it. But I was a was a good phase. I'll be honest. There was like a few months I was like properly like kind of like hooked on it. Not hooked, but like I'd open it, and like it's like a black hole for like eight minute, ten minutes to just pass. Well, it's it's that's what it's designed for. As soon as yeah. you open it, it mutes everything else, and then it just starts showing you videos immediately that you've already been looking at. So it's literally designed to keep you on it as much as possible, and they show you the stuff that's going to keep you on that you've been like going through. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's designed to, you know, to s- just take your attention. Yeah. We're going to talk about it, but just to let you know, um, these two are very successful entrepreneurs, uh, investors, and content creators. Uh, very young. He's very getting up there. But, <laughs> you know, relatively young as well. I'm teaching them. They're, hey, like, they're like best friends, uh, so it's nice to have them both together. Yeah. Uh, it's a big pleasure. But yeah, hopefully... He's a little bro, but yeah. <laughs> hopefully in this podcast, you're going to get some um, advice on how to become successful, how to build your character, how to develop yourself. So, yeah, I mean, let's get right into it. Uh, I would say, say first off, to to go off that, I would say, I think one of the big mantras that I follow is that if it's free, you are the product. Okay. So I think you can use that with social media. It's good that you deleted that. If anything is free and TikTok is free, then you got to realize like they got to monetize it in some way. And the the way that they monetize it is your attention span, Mm. is your mind is taking away, you're draining you. When you open, you go through that black hole. You're uh, you're looking at all these products. You're getting stupider. You're becoming mindless. You are becoming the product. So like everybody who's on social media right now, which is everybody watching this, you got to realize that the richest people in the world, they don't use social media for fun. They don't use it to go in a black hole. They use it for market research. Even if like rich people have TikTok once in a while to see what's trending, what you can do, how to utilize it. Every time I'm around millionaires, they're like, okay, what's popping right now? What's the real thing? How did he get this? How did this podcast work? You always try to figure out how someone got to that point. If you're just on there scrolling like a drone, you're going to be part of the system. You're just going to... 
Biggie famously mindless. said, don't get high on your own supply. And mm. if you're a TikTok creator, this is why it's so important to like kind of outsource that. Yeah. Like you want to have someone else do it for you. Like I have someone that like does TikToks and they do it on another device, on their own stuff, yeah. whatever. And I don't Me have too. to worry about it. So that way it kind of keeps you off of the app so that you don't have to worry about like actually posting content and then, you know, getting into the black hole. Because yeah, like that's, that's what they're paying for. That's what social media is. Can we get your attention, right? And that's what they're really competing for, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, LOL, or Instagram, right? Like, they're meta. competing for, yeah, meta now. Like, they're competing for your attention. That's why, like, you know, YouTube, they'll push you, if your watch time is high, they push you more into the algorithm because they want you to keep people on. Instagram, do people engage with your posts? Do they swipe left? Do they watch the videos? Then they're going to, keep you know, yeah. push you more to the to the Discover page. Same thing with TikTok. The, the more people you get, like, watching and sc scrolling through your videos, the more engagement you're able to get, boom, we're going to put you at the top. So it's all an attention economy. And just like you said, if it's free, Attention's that's the new goal. Yeah, like Alex Hormozzi says, yeah, that's what it is. Absolutely, and and today's day and age, um, people have a shorter attention span than they ever did. You know what Crazy I mean? Look. It's like literally like because uh, I'm 33, so I'm like old enough to remember what it was like like where you before social media, yeah, before text messaging and everything, where you had to actually like call someone or like yeah. you know had to dial or whatever or dial up internet. Yeah. But nowadays it's like instant gratification. So they say when the phones were tied, the humans were free. You know, yeah. so like we were like all good, and then. Yeah. Now it's like we're chained to this device. Yeah, like, kids don't go outside anymore. Man, you see that? They, bro, they they eat with their iPad in front of them. They brush their teeth with the iPad in front yeah. of them. Yeah, it's like they're it's their. That's laptop. your guys' generation, man. I didn't grow up with an iPad. iPad. I didn't have a cell phone until I was seventeen. But like you guys in your twenties, yeah. man, you Gen Z guys, holy. It's like a you're cigarette 24? for babies. I am 24. When you see a kid crying nowadays, the parent in public just shoves the iPad yeah. in their face until they shut up. It's like giving a kid a cigarette so that they can stop. I agree because now they're they're, they're upset in their mind. The kid is upset. So what does the parent do? Teaches the kid that they should distract themselves when they're upset with the iPad. So then when they get older, as they're upset about anything in life, they seek these distractions. They seek, let's say they have an issue that instead of dealing with the issue or thinking it through or taking any of the rightful actions that you would do to resolve the situation, They'll open the, uh, they'll open some entertainment, Netflix, TikTok, social media, whatever, porn, any, any of those, any of the above. And we live in what I call themselves. the on-demand era now because it used to be if you wanted to watch your favorite show, you had to wait a week. Yeah. Maybe it's a TV series, whatever, right? You had True. to watch television. You had True. to depend on that and then wait through the commercials. Nowadays, it's you can stream whatever you want, yeah. whenever you want, and you can watch as watch it as long as you food, want. Food, even food. Yeah, to your doorstep. Same Uber. Time. Uber Eats, right? You can get someone to come and pick you up. You can get someone to d deliver you food. You can watch TV as much as you so want. And you can watch all your stuff and binge watch it. Like, all this stuff is, like, fairly new within the past decade. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we live in an instant gratification society nowadays. But it's you can use different. it to your benefit because, yeah. like, one thing about our generation, you can realize that we're not going to be away from our phone. We're never going to plug it back of in. Course. We're going to have our smartphones everywhere all the time. And you can curate your feed to be positive content. True. I really like Twitter now because everybody that I follow, a lot of them are, like, independent journalists. There's good discussions back and forth people that I follow are interesting and always trying to say something funny or talk about current events yeah. it's a great place to get news after Elon Musk got uh, got Go in charge but even the, the people that I watch on YouTube or Rumble everybody that I watch they have some level of value that they add every time they speak and that's that's why your podcast is, is successful is because people watch this and they leave like okay like they, they think in a different way there's most of the content that people watch and I, we don't need to name all of them now but they, they don't have anything that they stand for and that really clicked in my head like when I saw when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do after doing like I've been on YouTube for a long time yeah you worked with Mr. Beast yeah I was I was doing all this stuff and it was just like it was kind of just like entertainment and then I figured like I want to do something that had a point yeah and I looked at I was analyzing and I was sitting down and I was seeing like most of these channels like there's it's reactionary it's talking about drama but there is no point if you look look at the other podcasts yeah. and the people that are successful they don't have any philosophy it's just mind numbing they're, no they're just there and then if you look at like the top banner of the channel it says like we talk about stuff literally yeah. and you ask like what what do you stand for and nothing yeah. so if, if you watch anybody that doesn't have a clear philosophy like you start off this podcast we talk, talk about finance business we talk about yeah. um, social media the subjects like, yeah yeah, all we, we're, we, before this podcast started, like let's talk about real estate. We're, yeah. Let's you have a clear objective with this. There's information that we can. There's value that we could add to the viewer. Most people don't have anything, True. and that really flipped a switch in my head. Like, why am I going to sit here and watch somebody that is just talking? <laughs> I'm wasting my time. You're wasting my time. There's just noise, just chat.
matter and I'm not going to leave with any energy. It's just going to drain me and make me stupid. So everybody watching this, do not give your energy away because if it's free, you're the product. If you give your time away to celebrity drama, mm. to blah, blah, back and yeah. forth, who's, who's dating who, who's this, you're not going to be any better. So if time is a commodity, then you got to use it to your, your best it's interest. And you know, you want to be entertained, of course, but there's got to be something that they add. The other 100%. thing too is people really have to be with like, you know, the digital age that we're in where information's everywhere. You have to be really vigilant about what you consume. And I'm real big on like, I don't watch anything if it's like, you know, fictionary or doesn't make me smarter or doesn't tell me what's going on. Like I'm really big into like, in my free time, I'll watch true crime yeah. stuff, right? Because I have another channel where I talk about true crime stuff from my prior experience. And oh, then man. I'll watch geopolitical no, stuff. A lot of geopolitics. Yeah, I watch a lot of geopolitics, geopolitics stuff. Geopolitics is very interesting. Yeah, to, to, and also to know like what's going on in the world, but you got to be careful because if you of consume course. it from like mainstream media, it's a bunch of BS. They'll tell you some stuff oh, like, lies. oh yeah, like uh, Ukraine's winning the war. LOL. No. We know that's a lie, right? <laughs> but you know, they'll tell you a bunch of stuff that isn't true. So yeah. you got to be, you got to consume your geopolitics from people that number one are based in reality and know what's really going on. And then also, just consume content that makes you better. I watch a lot of historical stuff too. Um, if it doesn't educate me, I typically don't watch it. And this is where people have to kind of be able to, with all the information out, you really have to be true, vigilant yeah. about what you filter in and what true, you filter out. True. But most people, like you said, they like to watch mindless content that doesn't yeah. make them you know better. You crazy though? And mind numbing. Yeah, you're 100% right. Because yeah. I opened TikTok um, very recently. I wanted to check how our account was doing. So after I deleted it, after a few days, I, uh, not a few days, it was like two weeks, I redownloaded it. And I said, let me see how our podcast TikTok account is going. When I re-downloaded it, I didn't want to sign in because I didn't want to put my log. I didn't even know my login details. I just signed as a guest. But the first few videos that it gives a new person who's watching would be those, like the, the mind-numbing ones. To drag and you in. Yeah, yeah, either that and also I think that that's like- Dancing videos, stuff like that, dude. They, they will try their best to bring you into that niche. And also that's because they know that that's the majority want that anyways so but i th what i try to tell people as much as i can is like okay look you know that as you said social media it's going to consume your phones are going to be around us at least also if you're going to consume try to produce if not as much or more than how much you consume so you're a producer you're not just a consumer all the right. time yeah even if it's small things you can learn like you go on one of you watch one of your or one of your videos or one of your videos and then like anything you any lesson you learn make a video about it or upload it at least that can help you in some way as well and here's the other thing people don't understand like in, in the united states like people are consumers this is why people are fat this is why people yeah. are in debt this is why yeah. people uh, consume way more than they produce and they're not necessarily in a good position economically health wise etc so the average american is broke fat and doesn't know what the hell is going on in life and the problem is that see that works if you're a woman right if you're a chick someone will come and sweep swoop you up off your feet even if you're 300 pounds but maybe two guys might swoop you up but either way you might get swept up but as a man you yeah. can't afford to be mediocre and incompetent as a woman you can be so what I'm saying is like that mind-numbing, stupid content, that's okay for girls to be on TikTok all day doing that, but you can't afford to do that as a man. True. You really have to have your stuff together because no one's gonna come and save you as a man. No one's coming. You wanna hear a crazy me. stat? Let's hear it. I don't know if you know pounds, but how much, do you know how much you weigh in pounds? <sighs> I, weigh, I weigh 78 kg. 78 kg, okay. I think it's like uh, 140, or like uh, 160 pounds. I think okay. it's like double. Guess how much the average American woman weighs? Average? Average. What do you think? In pounds, I think... Um, <laughs> if you're 160. <laughs> Let's say... Um, I'd, I'd, I'd hope for like, like you know, one f 150. <laughs> one <laughs> 170. Yeah. 170. 10 more pounds than you is Damn. the average American woman. Yep. Damn. An, An average, average black woman is like 187 is the average American black woman. Wow. That's a real stat. Yeah. Damn. And that really opened up my mind to how mediocre most people are. And like, not even that, like men as well. Men is probably more. Yeah. Or the average man weighs, uh, 197 pounds Damn. in America. Damn. Yeah. yeah. We're Big country. Fat, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Very, yeah. And it's, and it's accepted. And like, the thing is, like I said before, as a man, you can't afford to be. And that's why like, uh, with our podcast, Fresh and Fit, I'm so big on like, so we have a money Monday, right? Teaching guys how to make money, whether it's being an entrepreneur, Sick, investing yeah. in real estate, cryptocurrency, whatever. And we right. bring people in from different walks of life. So if I'm not versed in something, I'll bring someone else mm. that is. Then Wednesday, we talk about Womanizer Wednesday, how to stay attractive, how to make, you know, how to not be a simp, et cetera, yeah. because quite frankly, we live in a simp economy, right? Yeah. And then. Friday, we do a call-in show where we answer questions or we bring in a guest and then we have the after-hour show, we bring girls in and everything like that. But nice. the reason why is because I saw that there was a void in the market, right? So like guys wanted to get girls and they thought, okay, well, what do I say? What do I do, et cetera? 
And then I was like, okay, we'll do this, blah, blah, blah. But then they don't have their stuff together. They're not in shape. They're mm. fat. They stink. Mm. Their hygiene is bad. They don't dress appropriately where the clothes just fit, right? Yeah. I'm not saying you have to be dripped out or whatever, but at least have the clothes fit. True. Look presentable. Yeah. Be clean. Like, guys don't have these rudimentary basics in place. And this is why so many guys, like, get left on scene or don't get dates or whatever it may be. So that's when I kind of realized, like, oh, we have to teach you guys how to become more attractive high, high first. High males. Before you even like get the girls, because a lot of guys think like, oh, I want to get, get girls, I want to get girls, but like people don't realize that if you don't make a, like at least hit a certain look threshold, girls yeah. aren't gonna give you the time of day, mm. regardless of what you say or how good your game is. Yeah. You can't play the game unless you turn the game on. You don't even get in the door. You don't yeah. even get in the door. And and in today's day and age, table. with social media, Instagram, etc., it's more competitive now than ever before. Mm. You know, 100%. and I don't think guys really know what they're up against, at least in the in the West, like in uh, you know, might be different here in this part of the world. But in the West, it's like, dude, the average guy, like, you can't afford to be sitting here watching a bunch of mindless content. To you scrolling up on TikTok, watching girls twerk. Like, women can do that stupid stuff. But you can as a man. You got to get out there and get it for your own. Speaking of the simp economy, like, there's even, you can't even say the word simp on Twitch. Did you know that? Really? Like, that's how much that they want you to become that. Because no if you start to pull the curtain back and you start to, this like, bullying. No, it's not bullying. They just like, that's what Twitch wants. They want you to be a simp. TikTok wants you to be stupid. Twitch wants you to be giving all your money away to hot tub streams. Uh, yeah, she yeah. goes, I love you. I love you. It's literally a TikTok funnel. The top OnlyFans person on Twitch, Amaranth, went on an e-day with her last summer, blah, blah, blah. She makes a lot of money. And she said the only reason she still goes on Twitch because she makes 100K a month on Twitch, wow. she makes 1.5 million a month on OnlyFans. 1.5 million a month. The only reason she uses Twitch is because it's the it's a billboard for her OnlyFans. Only fans, it's just yeah. a funnel. It's a direct funnel because she said on every other website they kind of censor it. You can't have sexy content, but Twitch, it's great. Welcome. They want you to become a simp on Twitch. Yeah. That's the whole goal. Because yeah. if you're there, you're giving away all your money. Yeah. Literally, I talk about this extensively in my book. This is exactly why women deserve less. Great guys, Because real talk, <laughs> you, know, you set it up for me. Like, and I talk about this, like the whole simp economy that we have. This is very crazy. By the yeah. way, we have to th we have to talk a bit about yeah, this. Yeah, we could talk about it. And in, in the book, right? So the first thing is, you know, the money sign. Then the next is like, you know, don't get married in the West. Next is social media because girls are social media crack whores nowadays. And time, the and most important time. thing. And too many guys give these four things away to women for nothing. And if you look, right, people are like, oh my God, Marin, you're a jerk, whatever. I looked at all the top podcasts, by the way, yeah. which is long form content. All male dominated, not female dominated. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, because men have to bring value to get any type of attention. We're used to doing Versus that. girls, don't. Like, yeah. girls can do some bullshit and, and uh, you know, get attention. But the thing is, is that women don't dominate YouTube and they don't dominate long-form content. They typically only dominate short-form content on TikTok or Instagram. Even TikTok, pictures. the biggest TikToker is, not a, is, is now is Khabi. He, it's a dude now? Yeah, okay, Khabi yeah. overtook him. See, overtook so there him. you go. But, like, regardless, like, that's where I've noticed where girls dominate when it comes to social media is typically picture apps like Instagram or short-form content where they're dancing, whatever. But... Very few women can like keep an audience entertained for a long period of time. Now, Twitch is one of the anomalies, but they'll be playing video games or whatever. They're going to have their boobs out and sit in the boobs out or whatever. So right. it's and, like, and there's nah. female podcasts. If you listen to what they talk about, Call Her Daddy, Emily Ratajkowski, <laughs> former porn stars, they just get in, they hit the wall, and then they're mad because they're not getting the same attention they got when they were 21. So all they try to do is bring women to their side. Be a whore. Be an OnlyFans. And you are a bad person. You're a bad man if you don't want me when I'm 30 after having all my getting yeah, smashed I get it. I up on. Yeah, they, they, they want to bring girls to that level because they're, they're really bitter for the, the fact the, that the they, they use up their value. The podcast is Call Her Daddy and that's about being a thought. Like if all the other top podcasts, all male run, et cetera. And here's the thing. I'm not telling y'all to like treat women poorly or be a jerk or whatever. Yeah. Like obviously we're here in the UAE. It's a little bit different. But out in the West, right, you're in an English speaking first world country. Like don't be a simp because women don't respect it. Like you got to figure out which girls deserve more, but most girls, quite frankly, yeah. deserve the less. males. These, especially in the West, they put the they put women on a, pe on a pedigree. You know? Yeah, they they yeah. on a pedestal. Dude, in the West, like here, it's balanced. Like women understand that masculinity is a thing. Men lead, women follow, etc. It's like already kind of established in the culture. But the United States, it's not like that. Like the average woman does not respect the average man in the United States at all. Damn. Like the, like the average man is considered like oh like they're invisible to yeah. most girls. You know, and and the reason why I I blame there's a multitude of reasons for this, but I think social media is probably one of the biggest contributors yeah. to you know the skewed sexual marketplace or the mm. dating marketplace because you got a girl that's like a five, she's getting attention from guys that are eights, nines, true, and tens, true, true. right? Guys that are way above her level, but what she doesn't realize is those guys want her for sexual access, yeah, right? 
But she thinks that she can attract that caliber of guy. They come on my show all the time. Like, I deserve this kind of guy. It's like, no, you get sex from that guy only, nothing else. Yeah. But the, there are probably people who are less good, good looking but would provide like much more. But it, they don't care. Yeah, they don't yeah. care about them. They it's don't not care just about social them. media. It's thing. also the movies that they watch. All these Disney movies made these girls think that they're princesses without doing anything. <laughs> and they, they, they all think they're tens. They all think they're perfect. They don't think that they have to self-improve. That's why their podcasts are all just about how you're perfect, sex in the city. It's about how you can go outside and just date a bunch of yeah. guys. There's no self-improvement ideas for women. It's just accept me for who I am, fat positivity, accept me for who I, like slut walk. That They actually have that in New York. I'm sorry for swearing, but like they it's actually okay. have our it's yell your okay. abortion okay. protests. It's like they, they had protests in New York City, big yeah. reason why I left, where they would go and march and they would yell about how many abortions they have. Damn. So, so well, different world. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. And we'll get into it. I think what you were talking about before earlier about uh, America being consumers and stuff, it's actually yeah. crazy because I've realized like, you know, with all these days they have, like, you know, um, let's say Women's Day or let's say this day, you know. There's no Men's that, Day, really. Really? No. Yeah, really. <laughs> anyways, Women's even, March, there's no even Men's March. Even necessarily Mother's Day or these days, you know, they built all these days just for consumers because they want people to spend, buy gifts for this person well, on this all day. All the holidays Best for women. Day. Valentine's Day, it's just to spend Valentine, money on women. Exactly. It's, it just, and they just want you to consume, consume, buy, buy, spend, spend. And women are 80% of the consumer base in the United States. Yeah, true. And they hold three quarters of the debt. Yeah. So and I, and I've talked about this too. Like, why why are we so fem centric in the West in the United States? Well, the reason why why they push feminism, etc., is because when you push feminism, women make their own money. If women make their own money, they're more impressionable. When they're more impressionable, it's easier to sell to women. This is why advertisers target mm. women very heavily in the United States. Yeah. The ads are like, oh yeah, you go girl, you're special, love your curves, whatever. They don't hold women accountable for their bad decisions because they can sell to them. I've always yeah. said, when you lie, women buy. Yeah. So. If you're able to go ahead, because it works in two, two different things with feminism. What it's done is it's cut the, the it's double the labor market. When you double the labor market, now you can pay people less. Yeah. Right? And the, on top of yeah. that, everything is doubled because now you got to sell to men and women, etc. So it works in that way where uh, employers can pay you less. Now on top of that, now you have another work demographic who's less concerned with necessarily creating wealth and saving, more concerned with consuming. And that's just women in general, right? Yeah. They're, and, they're, and they're more prone to have debt. So... It works out to their favor where it works to have feminism and have men and women split apart because it makes more money. Yeah. And they also tax the whole population. Instead of half the population, just the men, you tax everybody. Now you're able to tax both. I actually, I think it goes even much deeper than that. I think they were doing it to try to control the entire population. And you saw with the cough cough what happened. When when you have women controlling, when you have women in charge, they're more emotionally charged. And so it's very easy to manipulate based on fear and not thinking rationally and men are confused. Okay, well, a lot of us, we didn't want to go and and put on the mask, stuff like that. But when you have women afraid, yeah, yeah, you're you're going to comply more. When women are in charge, then you're much easier to control and manipulate when you're constantly simping and you're weaker and you're sad and you're on pills and you're a slave to big pharma. And when you're distracted on social media, then you're easy to manipulate. And then the rich people get richer and the poor people get poorer. Look, in the past three years, those was the biggest wealth transfer of all time. The middle class lost the biggest amount crazy. of money in, in recent times. I know this happens in every single, in the recession and yeah. any big event. In here, but the COVID was the biggest example the of world. the wealth transfer. You could see the gap. And it makes think like what, like what, as an, if that's what the rich people wanted, you know, it was in the, completely in their favor. So yeah, they, and it they worked. I mean, they, they yeah. weren't, like, the rich people, they weren't inside, like, wiping the groceries down. They were they were of living course. life, having fun, traveling and, the world. And what you were saying about the women, it's interesting because, like like you said, they tell the women that, like, for example, if, you, if you're if you um, this weight, it's okay. And they put big, heavy models on, on billboards, not because they even care about the women, but because they want to show off those clothes for the, because they realize that now there's a lot of fat people, so they want them to buy clothes from them. Yeah. And the, the, what also women spend a lot of money on is plastic surgery. And the way they change the trend, like if you think about, you know, it's like beauty trends, like a few years ago, it was like, oh, if you were like, let's say when, when Kim Kardashian had these curvy thighs, it was all about yeah. being curvy. So people were getting were getting like uh, injections and, you know, yeah. bu- uh, uh, butt lifts and stuff like that. And now yeah. it's like all about being skinny. So what I noticed also is what happens a lot is they switch the trend to what, what everyone doesn't have. So they, again, need surgery. So like before, skinny eyebrows was good. Now it's like, like who decides these trends? They decide based on what... What the people have, like they said, the opposite is the now the new yeah. end thing. You, you know what I mean? States, it's full on like fat acceptance now, though. Like, like yeah. if you look at billboards from like the '90s versus now, like they have full on like big plus models that are like you know on Calvin Klein ads where it used to be like thin models. Like, you can be 
a 200 plus pound woman and be a model in the United States nowadays. Even the mannequins in Walmart are shaped like yeah. bowling but balls. But that's the girls think they care about them. Like they're saying I'm attractive. No, they just want you to spend money on those yeah, clothes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. all a psyop. The, yeah. the dad bod thing, it's all a lie. It's just yeah, to keep yeah. us control. I mean, look what happened. In the past three years, instead of telling us to go and get in shape, to go to the gym, they closed down the gyms and they told you to go get a bunch of yeah. injections because they don't actually care about your health. If they cared about your health, they would have said, get some sun, go outside, protect yourself. These are the ways to protect yourself yeah. from getting sick. Instead, they just they told you to go into a pharmacy. Yeah. Anyways, so moving a bit on from the women and the West, I wanted to ask you guys yeah. um, off the bat. If first of all, you guys are in Dubai, it's both your first time here. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Will you just land? We're yesterday? not gonna go back. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving. It? All roads lead Welcome, to Dubai. Look, look at that. <laughs> Everything we've been talking about is how the West is collapsing and why it's it's going apart. I mean. Dubai, this is, Dubai, this you're is, welcome it is what it is. I, I mean, I don't know if you really can really say this on YouTube that much. That's why I'm on Rumble, I guess. But I, I don't, I'm not very optimistic about the West. I think in the next 30 years, it's going to become a third world place. I, like during the BLM riots, when I saw all these stores getting looted and I nobody got criminal charges, but then everybody on January 6th, they're facing criminal charges now for doing the same exact thing. I think that's just a, a perfect sign of how they don't care about nationalism. They don't care about the country. If you have an American flag, they say that you're racist now. It's a racist symbol mm. to a lot of liberals. I, and I'm not optimistic about the West. And I do think that I can fight the fight in a different place. Uh, shout out to Ryan Dawson. He's been in Japan since the Bush era. And one of the problems I've had is that I'm saying like, I, I don't want to stay in the West that much longer. I don't want to raise a family here, seeing what they do in schools with the pride flags, how all these kids are having trans teachers with giant prosthetic boobs. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. Really. They don't pledge allegiance to the flag. They pledge allegiance to the gay pride flag. And when that happens, a whole generation, like we grew up with social media. That was already a lot for, for a lot of us to deal with and have this attention economy and getting addicted to clout and all this stuff. Yeah. But when kids have like trans teachers shoved in their face, True. they're going to grow up extremely confused. So I want to raise kids outside of America but also Pure, I, I, like 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 with like without too much distractions and like not thinking about sexual orientations and sex in without general. all this nonsense without sex thinking about sex in general yeah the, the, it's it's disgusting that they even do this and to anybody who justifies it like the lgbt stands for lesbian gay bisexual trans that's literally teaching like kids queer. like it's all sex it's yeah. sex acts so they every they look at this flag and they're seeing se all weird types of sex yeah. uh so but i think you could still fight the fight i think you could still if you have the power of the internet, you can still talk about this and you could still help people with not being in the country. Like people are like, Oh, you're leaving us behind. And I still, I, I love being American. I yeah. still love the place, but I, I'm not optimistic about it. I feel you. And I think Dubai, especially with um, the safety here, like at the end of the day, like uh, we, we, we're trying our hardest to be successful and, you know, um, earn as much money as possible. And what's the point if you live in a, in a society where if you have money, you're not safe, you know? If you have a nice car, like if you see London, you can't even wear this watch, you know? If New York yeah. and London, I'm not gonna walk outside you with this. You know what this. I mean? So yeah. what's the point of having money in a place where, like, obviously for us, we're trying to work as You'll hard as possible. You'll be fine with that watch in, in New York, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know yeah. what I mean? Like, they, 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 it's like you want to have, you want to be successful and you want to enjoy your money. You want to have a nice car. You want to have a nice watch. Invest, investments as well, yeah. by the way. So. It's it's crazy that there you don't even have that peace of mind, you know. Yep. As you get successful, you you it comes worse your life. <laughs> almost. Yeah. You get more attacks, more. You know what I mean? You're more vulnerable. Yeah. And open to attack. So I think that the move to Dubai is. I mean, uh, Los Angeles is literally a third world country now. <laughs> the mayor just signed something, and you can have fruit stands out on the street. Like the, it looks like Mexico City really? in LA, San Francisco. Everybody's leaving. That used to be the most coveted yeah. place LA, in, in America. All the YouTubers are moving to like Texas and. Suffers tax as well. They're getting out. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah, Colorado, Puerto Rico. A lot tax of havens. Yeah, but, but everything in California, it's just an absolute. Doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. it's, it's bad. You were saying earlier that you wanted to go visit. Man, you're going to be alarmed because, like, I had this idea when you watch the movies in the 90s, yeah. like, people are running concrete, on the beach. The, and you are the concrete jungle, you know? LA is like beautiful weather and trop. No, it's, it's tense and piss and fentanyl and, and it's dangerous too. witches and stuff, literally, yeah. like, witches on the street, all this astrology. For me, I want to visit, but to meet people. People like yeah, you guys, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. I mean, definitely visit. You there know, a lot of mean, good like, people. Go check it out. A lot of good people, but, hustlers. Um, and yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like California when I went there, went out there. Um, no offense to all the California people, but yeah, no, it it's, sucks. It's, it's offense it kinda, to you guys. Yeah, I would, I would, California sucks. Yeah, get the hell out of there, man. It, they call it California for a reason. Like, so many people are getting out. Like, higher. If you're a higher earner living in California, like, it's probably not in your best interest because they, they tax you. So many different times between the state tax, county tax, city tax, all this different stuff, and and then on top of that, you can like in San Francisco, you can steal up to like almost a thousand dollars worth of stuff and not go yeah. to jail. It's just it, and there's a homeless population issue. So a lot of people are going to Florida and Texas. Why? Because these states still are relatively low free, tax. low taxes. 
cheap to live in. You can still, um, even though the price of Florida has been going up thanks to New Yorkers. But yeah, man, those are some <laughs> of the last frontiers left in the United States where you're still going to be like, yeah. you know, you're able to still enjoy some semblance of a high quality of life without necessarily being in a clown world like New York City or L.A. But, you know, it, it is what it is, man. I mean... Yeah, I agree. When it comes to like raising kids, or whatever, when I decide to have children, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to come out this way because yeah, nice. raising kids in the United States is probably not with the way things are. You know, you got parents, you know, kids getting kicked out of school because their parents are only fans. Uh, you got you know kids that are identifying as a million different genders. You got teachers teaching your children a bunch of weird stuff they don't necessarily need to know. It, it's just strange clown world stuff going on right now you. in uh, in in the West in general. Yeah, you know, and we're 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 basically. We care more about people's feels before the reels. Mm. You know, it's like, let's all be inclusive and everything else like that versus like, now we're missing the whole point of like, you're not thinking objectively children. and yeah, we're not just thinking with our, with, our, with our heart and yeah. emotions. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's trying to virtue signal and it's, it's annoying. Uh, it's like, you don't have to virtue signal in school and in the education system about like, oh yeah, we need to be all inclusive in this. Like, who cares? Like, yeah, even about like money, you know, you find these people who are, who are like, um, they're saying like, oh no, I don't like money. And like Naval, he talks about this a lot. You guys watch Naval? Naval no. Ravikant, no, uh, it's pretty smart guy. He's been on Joe Rogan, like investor, like yeah. worth like hundred mil yeah. USD or something like that. Anyways, he basically says like the people who say like money's not everything and like money is not important or like we don't need money, but basically they're just what they're just status signaling. They want to show like oh like we're above this kind of game of like fighting for who's because he's worth a hundred mil. That's why yeah. he say nonsense like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, stupid. No, <laughs> no, he doesn't say that. He's saying that it doesn't make sense that the people who do that. You know what I mean? Basically, he's against this this, this stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? against the people that are saying like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. we don't need money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's worth hundred million. He's basically saying that the people who say we don't need money, they're instead of playing the who the, says we don't need money. They're, no, they're people who, who talk like money's not important and money's not everything. You haven't heard that kind of that rhetoric, like from Bill Gates and shit like that. You know, what I'm not even Bill Gates, but like just like bro, regular people who are like money's not everything, money's not important. I don't know. There's there's a community. It's dumb. It doesn't make sense. But yeah, it's like they say money's not everything. Yeah, war is not everything. But like you need it to live, you know. But anyways, aside from that, I think Dubai, great place. What did you first impressions walking around or like? It's still happening. Our first, but we haven't even really been here for yeah. 24 hours. Yeah, there's so much I want to show we you. We just clean. got off. I'll say that very clean, very safe. Uh, Police state, but that's good. You know, all oh, those skyscrapers. I haven't even seen any policemen. Like they ever, yeah, like people talk about the low amount of crime. I haven't seen one cop walking around. I'll yeah. take a police state if it's safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Which which it is, you know. Yeah, and you guys saw the? Did you guys see the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world? Yeah. Dubai Mall. Yeah. Well, it. we didn't go to, to it yet, but we saw we saw it like from the side. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Sick. All right. Um, w let's talk a bit about um, one of our dear friends. Um, you've made many videos with him. You've obviously met him many times and made videos with him. Uh, myself, he sat in this chair where I'm sitting now. Uh, Andrew Tate. Yeah. Um, I miss the guy so and much. And Tristan Tate, free him too. And Tristan Tate, sorry, yeah. But I mean, like, I, yeah, I had I met Andrew. I had him on the podcast. Tristan and Andrew Tate, um, been locked up. They've just been, there's things been extended now. Um, what, what are our thoughts? How are we going to get them out? <laughs> And what are we gonna do? Like, what's basically what's the situation? I mean, there's a lot of work done being uh, happening behind the scenes, and I would say for people watching, the best thing to do is to keep the positive message alive. They're trying to paint this bad image and ruin his reputation, and try to make it seem like he's pushing these bad ideas. But everybody who watches the content knows what he stands for. He's anti-drug. He is uh, says that we should protect women, that we should provide for them. He tells men to be the, their best selves. Exactly. Uh, personally, I'm a good example of somebody who found that type of content at the right time in my life, and it made a positive impact. And it made a really positive impact. Like everybody Same. who's been listening to him, like you can see it happen to you. A lot of young people 100%. who listen to his podcast uh, have had a positive. Um, have seen positive changes in their lives. So just e for everybody watching, like what you can do right now is just say positive things and make sure to like look at the documents and look, try to find any of the evidence. Like the people who are saying, he's a terrible person, yeah. but where's the evidence? So what Show me the evidence that he's a bad person and then I'll believe you. But yeah. everybody that knows, knows. There's nothing, he, they're in, both innocent. Yeah. And it's garbage. What about those voice notes that they put on Vice? Like I, I, I definitely don't believe in them, but I'm just saying what about the people who say like, oh, I heard a Vice voice note. Yeah, I could sense a role play. Stuff like that is taken out of context. They try to make it seem like they, they always clip it up. I also think it could be AI. They, I think it's, it's very highly it's could be AI. It's clipped in a certain way to make them seem like violent people. It's manipulated. If you look at the full context of it, it's never bad. There's not any damning evidence of yeah. them Plus, Andrew's all. so smart. Why the hell would he leave a voice tone like that to someone? He wouldn't. He's not an idiot. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. Plus, also, you have to think about something like 
you know Andrew Bing who he is and how smart he was. If he ever did, if he ever hurt a girl, would he be online talking about how women or like would he be saying like stuff about women and he would he would steer as much as he could away from the topic. He'd never say anything slightly negative towards women because he'd want to steer as far away as he could. Yep. So him talking as much as he talked about the whole women's situation, it shows that obviously he, he would never do anything like he would never have any crimes in that field where people could look and say like, oh yes, what he's saying matches the crimes, you know? Or like it relates in any way. Whatsoever. So here's the thing. I, I used to actually investigate human trafficking when and I was honest, an agent. Oh shit! Yeah, for Homeland. So, like, this is something that you know I could speak about. Um, well, number one, they're 100 percent innocent. I spent a significant amount of time with them. These guys aren't holding girls against their will. If anything, they're 100%. they're trying to get the girls out the house. If anything, they right? gotta kick them out. There's yeah, too yeah, many. I mean, and here's the thing. I've seen girls be rude to them. Right when I was there in Romania, we, we were there for like weeks. Yeah, and they still would get them an Uber, or get them a cab, whatever. Like they went out of gentlemen. Their way. They're yeah, gentlemen. They're gentlemen. They really are gentlemen, and they're and Chivalrous. they're big on being gentlemen as well. And there's so many. Here's a, okay. Let's talk about Vice first, right? Yeah. So you talk about the voice clips. There's two things. Let's say the voice things are real. The voice notes are real. Let's say they are real, right? Mm, for Even though sake. there's a bunch of evidence showing that it's AI and it's BS. I've seen a text conversation. The girl said it's not grape if it's consent. So we already know that that was a conversation that was already being had where that was that's like a kink for the girl, Consensual, right? That's yeah. number one. Number two, let's say, and then the other option is that uh, it's, it's AI and yeah. it's fake. But either way... They never showed the entire conversation. They just played like the voice notes, but they don't know is that a lot of girls have fetishes for this stuff, guys. Ta-da! I know a lot of people don't tell you this. The nice guys don't know this. The simps don't know this. These blue pill losers don't know this. The weird libtards don't know this. But the reality is a lot of girls have weird fetishes like this with dominance and men being assertive, whatever. If you look at the top book, yeah. right, that women love to read, one of them is what? Fifty Shades of Grey. Who is the man? A guy who's... Tall, dominant, millionaire, Kidnapped assertive, her. all this other stuff. <laughs> Women like that type of stuff. A lot of them do. They don't want to be responsible for being 304s. They, they want plausible deniability. And then yeah, the other thing, plausible. too, they try to say, oh, well, Andrew beats girls. And what did they use? They used that stupid videotape uh, footage of them on the bed where he slapped the girl. She went on air twice saying, oh, this is something that me and him used to do together. It was something that I liked. And she gets sensitive. And then here's the other thing, too. People don't have critical thinking skills. Think about this. If you're really going to be smacking a girl and assaulting her and all this other stuff, Why would you, would you set it up in front of the bed with a tripod, whatever? Like, people really don't have critical thinking skills. So they hear a voice note out of context. They don't know if it's AR or not, right? And then you look at the t actual text conversation. She's like, it's not great if it's consent. So, bam, that's out the way. And then number two, you're over here looking at a footage of like, oh, yeah, I, I seen him assault a woman, blah, blah, blah. She goes on air and says, this is something that I like. But people still keep trying to say, oh, no, he hits women, blah, blah, blah. No, he doesn't, bro. And if you use common sense, you would know no guy that actually abuses women is going to set up a tripod in front of their bed yeah, and then yeah. do it right there and then have it. Huh? I'm like, what? How many years? Uh, have, uh, you're 100% right. How many years did you know, Andrew? I've known Andrew since twenty since twenty twenty. So, but it was I think one of the first podcasts like he was going on. It was like one of the first viral ones at least. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. When he came on, yeah, we've known Andrew for a while. You hung um, out with him a lot, yeah. Yeah, and, Bro, and it's, it's so just nice, to, so what, oh, such a nice guy. The fact that he came on this podcast, you know, obviously, like I helped him a bit out in Dubai, but he had nothing to gain by coming on this podcast. I'd already yeah. helped him with whatever he needed help with, and. He had nothing to gain, but he wanted to to just support me. And bro, one of the nicest guys I met. You know, you can ask anyone who, who who's in the studio who works here. You know, Marwan's there. He'll tell you like the guy's gentleman. He's, he, and here's the thing: like he's he's been he's always been that way. Been very polite, very nice. Um, when he's come on our show, he's always treated the women that come on the panel very well. Um, and and the thing, see, people see like these clips and they try to put things out of context with it. And I and I. And I love how they play certain parts, right? And they don't play other parts. For example, right yeah. now, what they're trying to do okay. is they're taking all this footage from a course I used to have called the PhD course, right? Uh, on how to get girls. And they put the parts where he talks about like pimping or whatever, blah, blah. But they don't show the parts where he says, be a gentleman, be nice to girls. If a girl says no or doesn't want to hang out with you, no problem, get a ride home. They don't play any of that. They only play the stuff where he's talking about, okay, this is what you got to do to be attractive, blah, blah, blah. They don't play everything in full context, which also bothers me because you, when you, when we live in this TikTok era, this out of context clip era that we have, you could take something, 10 seconds of it, and really make it look crazy, especially if you edit it in a certain way. 100%. And no one watches anything in context nowadays. If you watch a full-on interview, most of the times, even as big a detractor, is like, wow, I agree with that. I see where he's coming yeah. from. But they don't want get to get to get to figure it they out. They want the quick statement. They the want to be haters. They read the headlines only. And then not only that, no one pushes all the information that shows that these guys are clearly innocent. The WhatsApp messages just came out. No, yeah, that's crazy. I don't crazy. see mainstream media it's pushing pretty much that. Not one mainstream news source Done. has covered that at all. Yeah. That's, that's, why that's why independent journalists need to go and start covering this because the two girls that got them arrested for trafficking back in April of 2022... They were they were on WhatsApp saying, "Let's make a Netflix series about this. Let's pretend 
and let's make them think that we're in love with them. Let's yeah. go sell it. Make your best Oscar-worthy performance. So you guys don't Cry. know the news just came out that this was there was a leaked wire or whatever that showed chats that they 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 uh, planted or like as in they had the intention to frame him. They planned and even like the girl's mom was upset with her. Like, why are you getting the embassy involved? Why are you doing this? Why are you? And they just want they want attention that bad. This is the attention economy that we live in. These girls prioritize TikTok clout. They're demanding all this money. They wanted to start a TikTok career to dance in front of their phones yeah. instead of actually having basic human decency. These are evil people. The phone has turned people into actual demons. Like when they prioritize attention, when they have no morals at all, and they just want validation from TikTok, that's when that's when people really the, become evil. The girl evil. that accused Andrew, right? She's, it's 1,000% cap. She, she came from London. She's a Moldovan girl. She came and she stayed at the house for several weeks, if not a month. She went jogging every day. She with the dog. She went to the grocery store. She went shopping. She was doing her thing, whatever, taking Ubers all over the place. Tell me how you're being held against your will if you're going in and out of the house true, true, whenever true. you want. Leaving, coming. Yeah. yeah. And then also on top of that, she wanted 200,000 euro and she wanted Andrew to help her with a TikTok career. He said no. And then she was like, oh, I'm going to go and make this false allegation. Mm. And then now we have the WhatsApp messages, right? Clearly where you can see them conspiring with each other yeah. to lie and frame him. To, for monetary gain and the fact that they're still in jail right now preventative with no charges is ridiculous this is a human violation rights, of human rights yeah, human so rights what do you violation. think this is crazy 100% when do you think we can see them out I mean I know they have their hearing in late February I hope uh, that, a couple uh, they days. get out but at this point you know the, the Romania they're, they're trying to prove a point you know what I mean? So I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't try to hold them in there for the whole six months, right? They have up to 180 days where can they could do preventive detention. Which but the, so, so the maximum they can stay in is six months? Six months, 180 days, mm. right? And it's, and it's in 30-day increments. So every 30 days, th this was basically what's happening, right? And their rule of law is a lot different than other places. But in the United States, right, you need to have something called probable cause to arrest them, and then you have your charges, etc. Yeah. In and Romania, bail. they're yeah. doing it the other way, where they don't even have, have charges yet. They're putting them in preventative detention. Guilty right. until you're proven innocent. Yeah, and, and they're it's doing the, the investigation right now. So they come up with pieces of information. Yeah. And oh, the girls okay. are walking free. We need 30 days. We need 30 days. And then they just keep doing the 30 day increments. Damn, it's mad. Anyways, moving on from Andrew. But hopefully yeah. we can see him out soon. Well, I mean, this is just a, yeah. a warning sign for all men. Like yeah. you, you need to be yeah. extremely careful about the girls that you spend time with, especially if you're around these uh, these attention demons. They're going to try to take advantage of you. They, they, they it's They're kind of incentivized to because they're not going to get in any trouble. No. They get a lot of clout for it, which is what they want. And There's the no man is guilty until proven innocent. So... They're, they're going to get away with it and you got to be extremely careful. It's, it's not even really worth spending time with these ty types of women, even for recreational use only. It, you might as well just protect your energy, go on SR, leave them alone, let them be, let them run around and let them like spend time with somebody else. Yeah, find, find a woman who like you think a good like, quality a mother woman. for kids, you know? Yeah. It's, gonna, it's crazy where we live in a world where girls can make false accusations like this, get away with it and not be punished for it. And, and one of the girls, I, I know this for a fact from doing my own research, this isn't the first time she's made a false allegation. Four times before. One of the girls. Wow. Yeah, dude. It, it, that's why this this whole topic like gets me kind of uh, worked angry up. I can because, see because yeah. uh, I know the guys personally. I know they would never do this stuff. Yeah. And then the, the fact that these girls are lying for financial and personal gain, right? And then they were in the French Riviera a week after they left Romania. Went to French Riviera. Living life. What costing what cost like ten k a day to be in that area, driving around in in uh, Bentleys and Rolexes and all this other stuff. Where'd this money come from? Yeah. From energy. <laughs> the, well, no, they they, they I it, someone might have hired them to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, this is this is all wild, and I know that there's people out there that were offering girls that dealt with Andrew and Tristan thirty to fifty thousand dollars to lie on them. Mm, yeah, it's yeah. a jealousy and thing, big time. Well. Yeah, it's a jealousy thing when you're that successful that they they yeah. want to take you down, and it's not even just for the fact that they want attention, but there's something in the media, there's something in the air that's telling you that men that are successful are bad people, and that you should take them down. You should take down the alpha male thing. You need to bring them down. It, it's not fair. They got it for different reasons. So there's a certain hatred that, that that's not talked about, but that's the reason that it happens. I was just talking to a girl, and she had lied about getting in the injection, and I, I was gonna, I would made a joke like I'm. I'm gonna go tell everybody you're gonna get cancer. She went, no, if you do that, I'm gonna go make false essay allegations against you. Whoa. And she was joking too, but it was a real threat at the same time. She knew that this was the trade off. If this, I tell yeah. the truth about you getting the injection, I'm gonna go lie and put you in jail. Yeah, that's crazy. And that, I don't that know girls think is. about that as always like, and a, it's an it's, it's like, like, the fact, Even the, the fact that there. just, she could do it in one second, boom. Yeah, so Jail. Crazy. See, in the UAE, you guys might not deal with this, but in the United States and the West in general, this believe all women thing is real, bro. A girl can make an accusation against you and it'll ruin your life. And you're guilty. We saw with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. 
What was that? We saw it with yeah, Johnny Depp. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Depp. With Johnny Depp. But at least finally, now it, we're seeing, I think, and I think slowly, I think it'll change because we're seeing too many times. Hopefully, Andrew will be the second person. We realize, okay, like, Bro. Some, we, need to, we need to vet these claims. I, I, I'm trying to remember here, like, uh, what is it? If, 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 if witnesses of a crime, when it comes to Sharia law, what is it? It's the one, uh, uh, you need four women for one male witness? I think so, yeah. It's, it's four to one? Hey man, I'm not saying women are incredible witnesses, but what I am saying is that they're heavily influenced by their emotions. Or maybe two, it's you know what I mean. Two or four, yeah. Dude, yeah, but the point know, is, yeah, yeah for, for to be able yeah, to yeah. you know accuse someone of a crime, but it's been that way. Islam fixes so many issues, man. Yeah, I agree, and we should talk about Islam as well. Yeah. So for me, uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. I've been born Muslim, uh -huh. and you. Yeah, same. But yeah. I'm, 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 I need to, I need to become a better Muslim. That's yeah, something yeah. that I need to work. No, of on. course, we all have. Our well, I grew up in a I'm Muslim, Muslim household. Either. You know, yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. my my family's from Sudan. They came to the United States in the '80s, uh, but my parents are both very religious. They pray five times a day. My mom covers yeah. their hair. Yeah, my parents wow, are nice. very religious. Mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's especially harder to to. Oh, wait, sorry, let me say one last point before we yeah, yeah, sure. the Andrew Tate podcast. The Andrew yeah. Tate part. But yeah. I just want to say that if you guys should realize if we have two massively popular guests who are saying putting their reputation on the line constantly and saying this is not true and these guys have hung out with Andrew they've seen him around girls they've been with him around girls off camera on camera mm -hmm. and if they're putting their whole reputation on the line when the guy's inside like like you know right now Andrew's in jail right now he can't he can't give you uh, like any help necessarily or he he's not he, I haven't you have, spoken to him since he's been you, locked up oh okay you have not you have not, not much benefit to stand right now by standing here and protecting him yeah. no, actually, but the fact, every, every sign is telling me not to do that there's people like exactly. close to me that are saying like look at you Listen, supporting yeah. a trafficker they're, they're upset with me yeah. uh, right. everybody's saying like you're putting your reputation imagine if they're guilty you're gonna look yeah. stupid but I I believe in the truth you know what I mean and, and no, that's just, I that, should right be, that should be enough proof, you know? Yeah. We have and and, and not only that, like, I look at it like, hey, man, if you guys want to go ahead and attack them or whatever, the they evidence. can't defend themselves, yeah. well, well, I'll be here to, to help because at the end of the day, there's so much misinformation and we're going to use our platform. Anytime new evidence comes out or new cover information comes out, I cover it immediately. Hey, this is what's going on, whatever, because, you know, the mainstream media is trying to paint them in a terrible light. So I look at it like, you know, I have this quote. I say that, you know, people will go ahead and definitely support you when you're, like, doing well. But yeah. where are the people at when when they're trying to come at you? Of course, yeah. You, you know say what I mean? When, when, when you're at the top, you know your friends. Uh, sorry, when you're at the top, your friends know you. But when you're at the bottom, you know your friends. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's Absolutely. a lot of cloud chasers that were really talking about him a lot when he was, when they were free. Yeah. And they go silent as soon as, yeah. like, there's a lot yeah. of people that, like, we don't need to name names. But, yeah. like, when they were out there, you were you were using that name to better your platform. It was good. Like, he every was good, single, yeah. And I think turn. it's kind of like you as well. Like, you know, before you got canceled... You know, a lot of people used to would like act like they were your friend, and yep. as soon as you got canceled, oh, they switched I'm up sure immediately. Many yep. people, right? Yep. They we know, up we know a couple of those people. Yeah. yeah, it was really eye opening for me because I I had a lot of like you lost like a lot of like but probably like from your income like a good like your source of income like probably eighty percent or. Uh -huh. Not 80%, but I lost a good chunk of the income, but also you know I mean? a good chunk of like my Online YouTube friends, presence. cloud friends, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, that was a bigger, I'm like, all of you guys were fake? Yeah, damn. It was, it was very eye-opening, but yeah. th that's when you realize that you're right, who your real friends are. Yeah. And, and this is why I thank God that I came from the professional world versus like coming into entertainment because... I used to work in law enforcement first yeah. and like, you know, camaraderie, loyalty, et cetera. You're going through a door, Discipline. A, you know, going after drug traffickers loyalty. and the person behind you got to make sure that they have you. Right. And I learned all this. I'm 33 now, but I learned this discipline and loyalty and all allegiance to the people that you're with, the like young. Yeah, right. Yeah. But these young boys, especially these people on like the Internet, whatever, they don't have any of this stuff. Yeah. So I was like, what the hell? So like because we're talking to me, prioritize clout and stuff like yeah, that. They prioritize know? what does well for them. So I look at it like, you know, if some new news comes out, with Andrew, I'll push back the show I was going to do. We got to report this because we got to get this out. Out there we gotta use our platform True, yeah. to put out the truth about what's going on and I, hey man he's my friend i'm gonna stick with him until me he, too you know what I mean? whatever for me i have that thing in me like i have that until the, the guy end. yeah if there's a guy who's like my boy you know i don't care yeah it's, it's my it's because people come to me too oh bro you're defending him blah, blah, blah. i don't care we yeah. are gonna defend him yeah, we yeah. are because i know him so i don't care what you think yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna defend him until the end for yeah 100 percent we'll, and we'll do this on every single podcast exactly we'll, my we'll, we'll, we'll represent it exactly we'll be we'll, we'll hold that position for him you know what i mean you so, know and, yeah and yeah. i think that's great people it's really well the, the gang sign for toxic masculinity now yeah. that's, i don't understand that but by the way let's just say like the the video of him coming outside at the house doing this like cold you know what i mean like i want to put them on wallpaper <laughs> it's a cold photo but yeah obviously messed up situation we're going back on the subject about islam yeah and stuff your mom my mom obviously hijab all yeah. my cousins and that's another thing about the hijab a lot of people straight away when it comes to hijab what the hell is this you know what i mean yeah for me i think what a lot of people don't realize um 
and at least for me, and you can mm. tell me about yourself, but yeah. for me, my younger cousins, girls, yeah, as they're growing up, they're the ones who want to wear the, like, they, they want to wear it before they even have to buy Islam clothes. They want to wear it before because for them, obviously, for them, obviously, they see their mom wearing it, their aunts wearing it, but nobody in my whole community, nobody I know that I'm slightly related to or that I'm friends with that is Muslim that wears their job, wears it out of force, you know? Mm -hmm. They all wear it because they want to wear it. Mm -hmm. And I think, of course, same in your side. So yeah. I don't understand. They talk about freedom and they don't want to let us wear what we want to wear yeah. when, when we want to cover our hair. And the thing is, they don't want, they don't want modesty because obviously, as you said earlier about this whole movement, you know, for the... Well, I've always said it. If girls get mad at me when I say this because girls will come on the podcast and they'll be mad and like, men don't respect us or they treat us like crap or they're always sexualizing us or whatever. And my response is, you can only be sexual. Women are only sexualized if they sexualize themselves first. Mm. It's on the woman, it's her responsibility to not look like a hoe. Because if you look like a hoe or you dress like a hoe, People guess what? Treat, People yeah. are going to treat you like a hoe. But girls yeah. in America are so delusional that they think, I'm going to behave like a hoe. I'm going to dress like a hoe. I'm going to talk like a hoe. I'm going to act like a hoe. I'm going to do all this like whole stuff. But expect people to not treat me like a hoe. Yeah. And the world that we live in just doesn't operate that way. Of course, if, if I'm a man and I and I get a girl by, by everything, by showing money, right? So yeah. like I, I get her just by showing her a nice car, I take her to a nice dress. Obviously, she, that's what she's going to be interested because that's what I showed her. Yeah. But And everyone's like, yeah, of course you got a gold digger because that's all you show. You use your money to lure her. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it comes to the opposite, they, they, they want some like different a different scenario. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, people typically treat you how you put yourself out there. So, yeah. Uh, but with women, don't they don't understand is that men cannot objectify you unless you objectify yourself first. And this is where Islam solves this issue, this issue yeah. because it protects women's modesty. Yeah, okay, yeah. and the reality is is that it's very difficult for a man for a man when he sees a beautiful woman and her beauty is being shown to be impartial and take her seriously. Let's just be honest here. They're going to look at her as a, as a sexual object to a degree. This is why they want her to cover her hair. Uh, this is why they don't want her to show her figure, etc. It's to protect her from the dark side of male sexuality. Mm. Right? Because yeah. when men look at an attractive girl and her body's out there, what do they think? Well, immediately their, go their head goes yes. into the gut. So sometimes it's hard even for them to have a proper conversation. Exactly. Or they're they're distracted. not going to think, wow, she's really smart and all this other stuff. No, they're immediately going to sexualize her. And if you don't believe that, then you don't live in reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? And at least first, that's the first thing that hits you is looks. But if she comes in and she dressed modestly or whatever, then you're going to be more attentive to what she has to say because you're not so concerned with what you see. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why for me, I, I talk about this a couple of times, um, especially with Hamza and even with Luke, Luke Belmore. And I, I even Ham, uh, even Iman, I told him as well, like for me, I'm going to do an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much you guys know about that. But in our, in our familiar. community, yeah. yeah, you're very familiar. I'm sure yeah. I'm sure you've got the option many yeah, times. Yeah, my parents have been they trying to do down, it for years, bro. They showed you the, they showed you on the iPad. Like, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. This cousin, yeah. <laughs> Yo, this cousin back, back in Sudan, maybe or yeah. whatever. They like you have this cousin, you have this. But where you guys marry your cousins? No, so it's not necessarily. It has to be a cousin. It can be a cousin, <laughs> but most time for for me, it's gonna be like a family friend or like uh, like maybe a cousin's cousin's cousin. But like, there's no. Back relation. in the day, it used to be like if they could, you could do a cousin or whatever. Obviously, hell no, not now. But but it's they'll say that where like oh. There'll be a close family friend, and they'll refer to them as an uncle. Then they'll say it's a cousin, but it's really not. It's just one. a it's, it's figure of speech when you say cousin. It's a figure but, of but there are people who might. Do you think that's that's very weird? <laughs> I'm not marrying my cousin. <laughs> yeah. I'm not either. But I'm but yeah. it is me it too. is something that. But I mean, if you had, as in, uh, let me ask you this: If you had like a perfect cousin, but true, but like perfect, like every ticks all the boxes. I'm I mean. I'm good on that, man. I'll find another girl. <laughs> but but arrange a different. What, girl. what if it's like a third cousin? Still no? No first through 10, ten 10th cousin. <laughs> 11th, then I'll be like, okay. <laughs> it's funny though. Yeah, yeah I, anyways, I'm not doing it, but I, I, well, I don't like, I don't, they're going to get mad at me for saying this. Uh, I'm, I don't, some, some Sudanese some girls are hot, but yeah, typically not my, not my preference. Yeah, not your cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. Yeah, anyways, so I think that for me, um, when you have a girl that's obviously raised with the right values, um, Let's say, for example, my mom, she goes to the mosque, right? And she, and she goes on the women's side. The women and men are always segregated. Yeah. And she finds women there who are going to the mosque. And she knows that she knows their parents who have raised them with the right values, right principles from the day one, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. You know, that she, they know about, like, they know about life. They know about values and what, they know what their morals needs. and principles that they yep. should stand by. So that's very important for me. Like, in, in, in the Western culture, I've noticed that, like, let's say even once, once you get married, Let's say, for instance, arranged marriage, the families are merged, right? So let's say um, if we fight, the families like tell us, like, you know, yep. sort it out. Yep. And by the way, you can look, go on Google right now and search. What is the divorce rate for an arranged marriage? Look it up right now 4%. 4%. Yep. And it even says right under over 50% in America. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. A flip of a coin, strike of luck. So what I'm saying is, 
if you if you have the opportunity that you have a woman who like is from your mom's side or from your dad's side like your dad like tells you know you, your family friends and th- when the families are merged i don't know f- i don't know if it's possible in all communities but for me it's very viable my brother did it my cousins all did it none of them have really any problems everyone's smooth in fact the people in the family who didn't do it they're the ones who have like yeah and also another thing is when when so let's say as I said the families are merged yeah the girl has a fight with you she goes to her mom her mom's an experienced someone who's been married 30 40 years who can be like listen when this happens this is how you deal with it and you have to have this conversation with them sit down and they can give them from an experience point of view mm-hmm. whereas in a western society a girl has a fight with the guy who did she go to her best friends yeah, her best friends course. they want the friend back and they let's just, the, you know what i mean let's go to the club let's go to the club let's let's go bang yeah. another guy it's a bunch of yeah they don't give any good yeah. advice yeah, they yeah. really don't and they know it too so anyways, moving on from this though, Islam, praying, do you, you're saying your parents pray five times a day. Have you started praying? Do you pray often? I pray this morning, actually. I went to the, nice. there's a prayer room in the hotel. Yes, I, I saw it. put the, the mat down and uh, really? I said a prayer, yeah. Nice. Uh, so is that like the Christian prayer like this or? No, I, I tried to do an uh, Islamic prayer with really? the, uh, going Mashallah. on my knees and everything, yeah. Wow. I'm the, He's going to convert soon. Really? He's gonna, no, I'm just kidding. Just no, well. <laughs> We're going to get him to come. It's, 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 I think about it. I've, I've been reading the Bible and the Quran. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously no pressure, but I'm interested to hear your experience. I mean, if, if we're going to be honest, there's there's uh, two different ways of thinking in my yeah. position right now. Yeah. It's whatever, which one you believe more. And at the moment, I think that they're very similar, Christianity they and are. Islam. 100%. Uh, so the, the belief systems, you know, it's pretty equal. The one reason I think Islam makes more sense in some ways is like the, the Holy Trinity thing in Christianity. Yeah. Like it's God bit. is the son and also the son is God. But, yeah. you know, human isn't perfect. That isn't, I understand like that debate. But also in Islam, if you're thinking strategically, not just with belief system, Islam is going to win. Uh, yeah. it, it's the only religion that does not tolerate any disrespect. In the church right now in America, you could have trans priests. You could have a <laughs> yeah. gay. There's gay pride flags in the church. Yeah. Uh, they, you can, I, I was in Madison Square Garden in New York and some guy like this, a bumblecloth guy was walking around with a Jesus cross on his shirt and he had a big X on it. And yeah. I was thinking that, I was just looking at him, like, imagine if you had... Um, An Islamic crescent or if, something. If imagine, I don't want to say that, but, like, imagine if that you, would, you wouldn't make it home. Like, you wouldn't yeah. make it home looking the way you looked. Something yeah, would happen yeah. to you. And that's the reason why it's going to win is because you need to stand for something. And Jesus has kind of become a mockery. Taylor Swift came out and she said that God is actually gay. And uh, there's people saying that God is gender neutral. Now, gender they. fluid God. God is not they. God is, God is a they, they them. them. The Pope is saying that we should revise it and we should allow gay yeah. people and that he's also choice which goes against like they're, they're trying to rewrite the core beliefs of this religion and that, that's it, when it falls apart yeah. when you try to adjust for the liberal for woke the mom when you try to like Target become woke it's over yeah so if you're thinking strategically like islam is, is it's the way you know if you don't if you don't they say if you don't stand for something you fall for anything and yep and i think in there you can see like they're trying to maybe Andrew maybe, says that yeah huh Andrew, Andrew says, says that, that yeah. yeah yeah for sure i'm sure he has and i think that if you if you like like you said um christian and i have nothing against christians by the way i should say that like they're good people and in islam actually uh it says like christians and muslims are both people of the book you know yeah yeah and and you guys are like from people ahl kitab yeah. it's like you're people of the book we're people of the book as well you know and we have nothing but respect for christians but i think that definitely they should not try to uh make their religion appeal to the masses just because they want to um, be inclusive, they want to be all inclusive. They, they, yeah. yeah, they should. They should stick for what they stick with, you know, and their their values because they're there for a reason. Yeah. Anyways, so um, moving on, wanted to talk a bit about. Let's say there's some people who are watching this video, they may be or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and they want to be more um, successful. You know. Mm-hmm. They're starting out. They they see Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate inspired a lot of people to you know want to have nice things, make a lot of money. Yeah. And let's talk a bit about that. Sure. How how what the do first you guys step, suggest? Yeah. I think following God. I think that's the best thing to follow your your morals and principles. What I like about Muslim people is they don't believe in making money in any false way. They don't believe yes. in scamming. They don't believe in doing any Rubbery. sneaky thing, uh, weird interest things. That that's not Islamic at all. So I, I think following. Yeah, I think me. what's helped me a lot is praying every day. That got rid of a lot of my like I had mental health like nonsense stuff beforehand. I was just like Ugh, like like this and like Sad, this is yeah. dumb. I didn't have a clear direction, and so there was a lot of wasted time. I would spend time like. Smoking smoking weed a lot. I would spend time thinking or... You didn't have an outlet. 
Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't have any proper guidance, and I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do. So I, there was a lot of time that I was spending with a bunch of degenerate stuff that was not focused on my mission and my purpose. Yeah. And once I started having a clear direction and knowing what I'm supposed to do and doing the right thing, that's when everything started to make sense in the rest of my life. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, for me, I mean, I think a big reason why I got, uh, I was able to make my, something myself is, number one, I never focused on girls throughout my 20s, right? Uh, and then also, I've never done a drug in my life, never smoked weed, never did anything. Nice. Right? And then the other thing, too, you is never, that... You, you don't drink? No, very rarely. I have drank in the past, Haram, I know. Uh, but... Uh, he but, really, that's true. He but if barely... I do, I bar yeah. If I do, it's very rare. So... The, I, I would say, like, the three things that really kept me away from doing anything stupid was I was an athlete. I played sports in, in college. Right? Yeah, I was a Division nice. one athlete. I rode. And then I never did a drug in my life, never smoked weed, none of that stuff. And then I drank very rarely, even to this day now as an adult. Like, I drink very rarely, if ever. So if you get rid of, like, stupid distractions like that, you'd be amazed at how productive you'll be. 100%. Um, and then throughout my 20s, I didn't really chase girls like that. You know, um, I dealt with girls here or there. But in, in my 20s, especially, like, from, I would say from... 23 to like 28 29 grinded oh yeah i was in the southwest border chasing after cartel people yeah you know with with drugs and human trafficking and guns and all this other stuff so i was really focused on like building my career and becoming a better agent but i learned a lot of like life lessons from that job which What'd is you why do for fun back then nothing like i would Good go to the question. gym and train and maybe watch some documentaries here or there i played overwatch a decent amount like i did i played video the games gaming, back then. that was your vice that was my vice okay. back then but like now you don't game anymore right no I no quit. time i yeah. quit yeah i quit video gaming in like 2019 when i moved to miami but now girls yeah. are your new video game i would say a little bit a little bit <laughs> but i don't think you think you need to have a vice i don't think you need to i, you, I see you tend to I'm the type of person to see that when we talk about this stuff, I'm like, I would be so bored. Like if I had an arranged marriage, like I'm trying to like picture my life, like marrying my third cousin and like the, the marriage is, is all aligned and it makes sense. And the families are going back and forth. And I'm like, like the amount of time I spend womanizing and just doing, you know, partying, I drink, you know, I'm like, oh, I just, I can't imagine that's that's how I need to rewire my brain because I'm just used to having that reward system and chasing dopamine to that level. Yeah, hedonism. But, yeah, he didn't, it's 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 so much fun. It is, but it is short term fun, and there's a lot of times where you finish and you're just like, okay, it's the fun that makes you sadder after. Yeah, yeah, I was I was talking to Myron like we were walking back from the podcast one night. I'm like, what's the point of this? You know, like I was, <laughs> you know, like the girls and the short term stuff. It's like, well, it feels good, but like there's the point of sex is to procreate, it's to have kids, and like we're we're doing this shit. Like there's Casually. there's no point. It's yeah. it's just sad. It's like gaming, literally, and gaming yeah. is just like you're constantly looking for the next level up. But it doesn't do anything. There's no actual point to it. So why waste time doing it? What I've typically learned is um, things that right give you upfront pleasure typically almost always 100%. lead to back end pain. 100%, but yeah. things that give you you know pain, pain upfront, upfront they give you typically give you back end yeah. pleasure. Right, That's whether true. it's building a business, saving money, gratifying, gym. going to the gym. Uh, delayed gratification is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, which is why I think the gym is so important, especially in today's day and age where we live in an instant gratification world. The gym is one of the few things left where you have to exercise this ability to have delayed uh, gratification. So, um, but yeah, man, I think I think a lot of guys need to take their 20s and grind. Like that's what I did and that's why I was able to kind of build myself up to yeah. a point. Like now I'm just kind of trying to, uh, starting to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Yeah. But yeah, man, throughout my 20s, I remember like, Sleeping on the mattress on the floor, right? And like waking up at two it. in the That's morning, three in the morning. That's what makes this part now enjoyable. If you yeah. had not done that, this would not be you enjoyable. Have to, yeah, you have to suffer as a man, dude. You really do. And and it made me, you know, I didn't become a millionaire until I was about 31. Yeah. But I'm glad that I made the money after the fact, after still, learning think, the basics, yeah. right? Of like what it is to be a man, what it is to go to the gym, living on your own, you know, talking to bad guys, you know, go, arresting people, etc. Like it, that job forced me to grow up very quickly right, which i yeah. which i'm glad for because now i've been able to take that skill set bring it into youtube bring it into business etc so certain things like are just ingrained in me like for example why do you stand up for andrew because that's just how i am uh you know why do you why are you so loyal to your friends and people that you work with like you're never gonna you catch live me. by a code yeah like i'm you're not gonna see this is why some youtubers i just don't like i won't even mention them but like they'll do a video with you they'll collab with you and then they'll go ahead and make a hippie on you a couple of weeks later or a month later or a couple months later right well, maybe when you're down or whatever because they want to get some ads down right 
because they want to get some AdSense. And to me, I've never understood that. If I collab with you and I get along with you, you're never going to catch me talking poorly about you. I'm going to shout you. I'm going to speak poorly, highly of you, et cetera. But, we, but there's not that code in the entertainment yeah. thing, which was foreign to me. That's something that I actually had to acclimate to like, what? coming to this side yeah. of the internet. Did we betray each other over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, it's it's crazy. It's but, yeah. um, but I'm glad that I sure. learned these rudimentary basics, right? This character building from going to the gym, from working that yeah. job, from being in law enforcement, et cetera. Yeah. Because the other thing too in law enforcement if you get caught lying, right, yeah. you lose your job, you lose your credibility, and you can get in some serious trouble. So being honest was a thing that you had to do, especially when you're on the stand. So, 100%. and I've testified hundreds of times. So it's just something that was like built into my character. And then on top of that, doing drugs, being an athlete before, yeah. we're already having this Sick. active lifestyle. It's, it's, it all builds upon itself. And I think the foundation is going to the gym because you learn that discipline, I you agree. learn that character building, you learn that delayed gratification, and then everything comes That's what I like what that. you're doing now with, with the whole Instagram stories thing. Yeah, guys have to actually go out of their way now. Uh, the social media generation, like we have to go out of your way. You can't just expect to have a good life as a man without forcing yourself to go to the gym yeah. and to be a better person, to have a network of people around you, to have good friends and like actively look for these relationships. You're not just going to go find them. Like there's a lot of groups that you can go, like in the past, but now you have to go and actively seek them right. out or else you're, you're going to get left behind. And yeah. it's getting harder this, with the attention uh, economy. Networking thing. Yeah, yeah. I have the my creativity kit. But of course, there's there's other other places you can go to you find can it. You talk about that though. Uh, yeah, but but I mean, there's there's that's what I provide. Like the creativity yeah. kit is a, is a network for people who are red-pilled who want to go and make money online. Yeah. Uh, but I've been posting all these, these gym stories every day to try to like – to motivate other men to like it's it's not using instagram to try to get validation to try to like show off it's just like i could be watching porn right now i could be sipping on twitch yeah. i could be doing some bullshit yeah. but here i am doing the hard thing yeah. every single day and i want to hold everybody accountable to that that's why they post each other yeah, that's why we make fun of each other it's like it, it's I, I it's motivating for me yeah. you know every single day it's like i have to be responsible for this post because everybody's looking for me to do it sure, sure, sure. and everybody who posted it one day like if they if they don't do it the next day then they're like they they feel Stupid. They're not part of the group anymore. They're not part so of it, guys, yeah. to give you guys some context, if you go on Sneakers Instagram story right now, you'll see tens, if not hundreds of people who are posting stories in the gym saying that they could be doing X Vice, whatever they have. But they could I'm be watching gym. Netflix. Yeah. They could be jerking off. They could they be, write, they write could that be watching Auburn and Preach. And they tag... <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they tag Sneeko in it and then Sneeko reposts it. And if you go, it's very, it's very wholesome. You'll see like all these young males hitting the gym, working hard. And this is what I really, really like about you two and Andrew as well, and Tristan, of course, that, you know, when I was growing up, this was the non-cool thing to do. And I think for you guys as well, when I was growing up in school, I was looking for people who kind of had this ideology, but this was always that, like, if you didn't vape or if you didn't smoke, if you, you didn't smoke cool. weed, you weren't cool, you know what I mean? And it's finally now having, like, people to come out and say, because it wasn't easy for you guys to first say, like, oh, doing this. Is, I'm sure people thought, oh, cringe, oh, this, That's that. exactly how I heard about Fresh and Fit. Yeah. Because self-improvement <laughs> and becoming a better person in the woke world is like, oh, like, you think you're, like, an alpha male? Yeah. You yeah. think you're, like, trying Incredible. to be better? What? That's stupid. Come yeah. sit down and get fat with me. When I first heard about Fresh and Fit, it was, like, everyone, all day, hit piece hippies hippies and i was sitting around in this woke world kind of directionless didn't believe in god degenerate and i'm like looking at you two like what do i do now what i i am tired of doing these cinematic videos i like, get doing interviews all the time everyone's a bot i don't know what to think and i'm watching everybody like sh like all actively so many hippies is like these guys are stupid i hate them Toxic like alpha males like, is what do they you refer toxic? to you think you're alpha i've never referred to, be to better? myself once as alpha but they call me a toxic alpha male or i say i'm alpha and i've never once called they call me alpha. that too now they probably <laughs> call you yeah, like, oh, are you like an alpha male and then the whole philosophy well, behind that <laughs> is they think it's cringe to try to be better it's lame you're yeah. supposed to be like this is, they're supposed to be canceling yeah. that is the woke virus and i looked at that and i was trying to figure out like why do they hate you so much and i watched the content and like this is good and i, I went in your show and like they were they were cool and then i went back and i'm like okay what do i do now like do i make a do I make a hippies video? Like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go be a snake. Like, I, I'm just tired of of living this way. Life and then, provides a value. And then it happened to me. The same people who are yeah. making all those hit pieces <laughs> about them. Hey, guess what? I get canceled. What do I do? You, you're like an alpha male, and I'm like, he was right. Yeah. I should have listened I to him. Man. Yeah, man. It, it, that's what I'm talking about. Like, these reaction it's channels. Train. Their job is to be impartial and be in the middle. But the problem is that they don't stand for anything. They Nothing. Don't really, if you look at like a lot of these reaction channels, like, have they helped you make more? I want. I want all the viewers out there. Think about but, it. Like these guys that talk the most crap about us did they help you make more money 
Did they help you become more attractive to women? Did they help you figure out how to go to the gym or get lose weight or get in shape or become more attractive? Did they teach you how to invest? Did they teach you how to become a better man in general? Teach you about masculinity, being positive, etc.? Or Facts. did they give you some stupid reaction video where they reacted to us saying that we're toxically <laughs> alpha, blah, blah, blah? And made some funny crap. joke, dumb or jokes. Or you some bullshit like, this is problematic. You know, anyone that says some dumb shit like, this is problematic. You know what I mean? Like any of these dorks, yeah. like, did they actually help you in any way or did they give you stupid commentary? That's facts. And waste some time. And the reality is what you're going to find is they typically didn't give you any value and they just gave you some mindless entertainment. And that's what they do. They'll sell you off for AdSense. That's what it is. And they don't help you actually become a better man. So anything that's good, like self-improvement content, making you a better man, etc. It's immediately demonized as toxic alpha male, blah, blah, blah. And it's a lot of the time, it's these soy boys that do it. It's the soy boy YouTubers that do it. That aren't in shape, don't have their shit together. Look at the guys that criticize us the most. You're gonna notice there's a trend. They typically have some weird long shaggy hair. They look hair. trans. They're fat. They look trans. They look like crap. They, they this is problematic. Well, they that's what the attention more economy has done. Well, when the atten when you can monetize talking, you're, it doesn't. You don't have to actually say something that improves. Like yeah. you could just be doing the same. Like Moist Critical, for example, has been making the same exact video on repeat since like 2014. Like, but same thing. Like this H3, is H3, yeah. this is every guys. single. They get down. This is dumb. I don't like this. This is boring. This is dumb. This is stupid for 10 years straight. And then they don't change anything because that's the attention economy. Hmm. As long as you're speaking, you're going to make money. So you're not incentivized to speak any truth or speak anything of value. If you could just talk and make wet fart jokes, if you could do that, you'll monetize it forever. Cause there's always going to be a demographic of 17 year old losers who don't want to change your game all day. Who are going to watch it. Yeah. Facts. Oh, wait, quick question. Yep. What does a day in your life look like? And what does a day in your life look like? Okay, so for me, um, okay. What time do you wake up? From from what you wake up to? You so I'm I'm I live like oh my I'm nocturnal. So we do our show at seven p.m. I'll typically wake up at oh, like maybe as, yeah seven p.m. Uh, yeah, e usually. Eastern Standard Time, right? So um, I'll typically wake up like right before the show, like five p.m. or something like that. What? Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take you through it, right? So I'll wake up at like five p.m. Damn. Uh, I'll prepare for the show, right? Depending on what the topic is. And then uh, I'll, I'll we'll do the show at seven. We'll be done by like eight thirty at the first show. Then I'll go to the gym. I'll go work out, and then I'll come up and we'll do the nighttime Your show. Gym with the every girls. day, four or five days a week. Okay. And then I'll go and then I'll come back upstairs, right? Because I'll go to the gym in my building. Then I'll come back upstairs and we'll film the show with the girls. Damn. Right. And then after we do that, we'll be done by like maybe one, two o'clock in the morning. Then uh, we go, we eat. And then what, uh, after that, I'll get like work done, whether it's preparing for the next show. I was working on my book for a while, so that took me quite a bit of time. Uh, recording the it link for Audible to buy or the book will be in the Oh, yeah, yeah. Why Women Deserve Less, guys. It's live now. I, uh, Audible conversion coming very soon. Yeah. But I was working on that, uh, typing it up, and then also with um, doing the Audible version of it because I recorded it myself. Yeah, sick. Um, better. I, yeah. Like, I like Audible, and especially the ones that the author does it himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I like go, like, because I, I use a lot of my phrases and stuff in the book. But um, so I would do that or preparing for the next show or, you know, it basically or I'll because uh, I have another YouTube channel called Fed It where I break down criminal cases. It's like a true crime channel. Nice. Or I'll do research for that where I'll be like, OK, which case am I going to do next? Yeah. If it's like a serial so killer. So you grind basically. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So if it's like a serial killer or whatever, like I'll do like pretty extensive research. Nice. And I'll cover it on that channel. His whole background, upbringing, everything. Exactly. Yeah, so you. that I can do it so that when I come on and I do it live, it's like, OK, we or I, if I pre-record it, I'll be able to speak in an educated fashion and I put time timestamps in it too i'm real big on timestamps so yeah. uh so then i'll do that until like seven eight nine ten in the morning work throughout the night and then go to sleep and then do it over wow. again seven to nine in the morning yeah Jeez. so yeah i'm like nocturnal so from nine to five p.m you sleep yeah like a reverse nine to five yeah it's a reverse nine to five because our show's at night so i basically wake up right before the show prepare do it gym second show eat and then work throughout the yeah, day. You know, I actually did this for a time when I was like, so during Ramadan, I was a kid, I used to, if there's any Muslims out there, they know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. when you're fasting, you have to like break your fast at like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. like sunset. Yeah. So we usually like stay awake and then like we'll sleep throughout the whole fast. So that yeah. was, it's the sleeping, the sleeping time. We'll put it's it kind of the cheating. Fast. It's, yeah. it's kind of, low key it is basically yeah. cheating. By the way, fasting, we should talk about later, like fasting and productivity is like a massive. Yeah. Nowadays, finally nowadays, the science has caught up to Islam. Yeah. What we were saying that now there's like literally it's like they talk about uh, what's it called intermediate yeah, fasting, intermediate fasting and, was, yeah. and we were like doing this sh shit for ages, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, hundreds of years ago. Anyway, so we were talking about basically um, what did you say? Yeah, that my schedule, but that's the difficult. The what schedule, it is. I'm nocturnal. Yeah. But do you think that? So I don't know, but I think the they say that the quality of sleep in daytime is because I like the schedule. I would love yeah. to do this, but they say the daily that. The schedule that you have mm -hmm. uh, and your quality of sleep is a lot lower during the daytime. Yeah. Have you noticed that? 
No, I mean, I'm okay because here's the thing. I'm used to it now because when I was working for the government, I used to work at night too. Ah, uh, so I would, get, I would get called out late at night all the time, two, three in the morning. They'd catch That's like, when the crimes happen. Some, some yeah. crook, yeah. So I, I was used to it even from since 2014. I've been, I've been that way. Mm. So. Yeah. So I'm really heterosexual, weird. so I go to the gym seven days a week. <laughs> I, I wake up at around 11 and then. Damn. Yeah, 10 or 11. And then have breakfast, do uh, a lot of creativity kit work that's been consuming a lot of my time recently. A lot of professors to handle, get in the talk to the people, add a video for that, and then make sure everything's running there. Uh, there's been a lot of like behind the scenes business stuff that I've been doing. And then I, I stream at 8 p.m. every single day, rumble.com slash Nico, every day. Check it out, link in bio. Yeah. And that's, that's a lot of times, so like three to five hours every single night. I go on Fresh and Fit probably like once a week at this point for the past Whoa, nice. couple right months. right down the street from us. Yeah, like... Oh, we're all in Miami. Really? We're all in Brickell, the oh, same okay. neighborhood. So. I've probably been going like once once a week, so like the, the, that'll be sometimes, but yeah, and then that's that's pretty much... So business work and investing... Do you, go out, stuff. Do, you go, do you go out every day? I don't go... I, there was a time where like Fresh, I was going out, so Fresh is like... If Myron's there working nine to five, Fresh will like it will go do the show and then go to the club and twerk and <laughs> sniff coke and stay at a section. He doesn't do that. And then stand next to rappers. He doesn't even drink. He doesn't even drink, bro. No, nah, yeah, he, he doesn't drink. I, I'm 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 lying right now, but <laughs> yeah. So I, I was I was going out with Fresh for a while, like, but then it's kind of a waste of time. Recently, I haven't really been going out as much. Yeah, uh, you mentioned like basically no social life in your day. Like, I mean, it's just work and then sleep, basically. Yeah, yeah. The show is your work social show. Life. Yeah, because by the time I'm done debating the girls, dude, I'm like tired. Like, because yeah, because yeah. it, it takes a lot out of you to like sit there and debate them for like two three hours, like just talking with the, like the delusion. Like, girls in the West are not like girls here. You know what I mean? Like, it's they'll keep going. The, yeah, and they'll argue about stupid stuff. Like, I'll say something like. Men are physically superior to women. Well, not all the time. And then they'll sit there and make a, a, an argument for yeah. like the one percent of girl that like you know An beat anomaly. a guy in some kind of physical An competition. Anomaly, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? So yeah, dude, it, it's that just is. wild. And then one time I remember we debated like some feminists or whatever, and they just Four kept hours. going, and it's just wild. But like, yeah, dude, they can't concede the fact that they're saying that uh, women are almost as strong as men. Sometimes, blah, blah, blah. the whole reason we're able to have this argument is because men set up the lights. Men are outside with guns. Men, you have to, the security guards are men. Men are outside men with guns. Men built the. Well, I mean, the policemen. Okay, if okay, something yeah. happens, like if it's to, I got you, got you. for you to feel safe in this room, because of men. Yeah, to have this stupid debate, it's because men are there who are going to be able to put Enable out the fires. It. Feminism is is around because men allowed it, and women will not admit that. But you know, as soon as as soon as like some chaos happens or something wild, or there's like a life or death situation, and women immediately revert back to being ladies. If someone breaks into the house, and this happened before, we've had shows where there's been like some guy come in or some 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 whatever. All the girls run. I go get my gun, and then I deal with the issue. Not the girls. So it's like it's it's proof. It's been proven multiple times, even on the show. Even yeah. All right. What's the one core lesson out of all Andrew's hundred of great hundreds of great lessons that is for you? Like if you could, your one favorite lesson that he taught. I recently I, I, I made this one. Uh, my background. I saw his old Twitter account of Udan. Yeah. Uh, I just made it on the plane. Udon. Yeah. He said, uh, "How foolish a man can be to breathe air, feel the warmth of the sun." To think, live, run, fuck, smile, laugh, cry on the energy found in a few pieces of bread and to not believe in magic. And that got me thinking like how everything that you consume affects your life. If bread can do that, if it can help you swim, make love, smile, go out, then the same information that you digest, the same thoughts that you think, the same words that you speak, it all has an effect on you just as much as, as food does because you yeah, can man. reprogram your mind. You can literally hypnotize yourself with thoughts and with words. That's deep. Um, what about you? I agree with Andrew on like 99% of things, man. But like, what's, what's one thing he said that for you like really stuck out? Uh, I can say like for me, I think he was like sitting in a car and he's like, I enjoy the smallest things in life. He's like, when I'm sitting in the car and there's like a bit of sunshine. And then he goes on to say, a bad day is coming. Like one day you're going to wake up and you're going to get a call that someone you love or someone you know of has got a terminal illness or has passed away. And that day is coming for all of us. Coming for me, it's coming for you, it's coming for you. It's coming for you guys watching. And that's the sad truth. So if you know that fact, that that day is coming, and today is not that day, then why don't you be happy today, you know? Yeah. That, you're gonna have that day to feel sad coming up. Today, you're good, you're alive, people around you, the people you love are alive. 
take that into consider be happy you know this is something this is something because um and me and andrew like i said before we agree on a lot of things and of we course, say the yeah. same things in different ways so like one thing that he said that i also said one time was and it's amazing like because we brought this guy on our show one time named skippy right and he's this guy that's known for being a virgin he had been on like tlc or whatever <laughs> and you know he talks about i'm depressed and all this other stuff but what he doesn't realize is that a lot of his issues that he has comes from his own inadequacies mm. right incompetence um yeah and incompetence is just being lazy and i and i and i remember asking him uh skippy where do you live the united states do you have running water yes do you have food on the table yes true. do you have a family that cares about you yes etc you have nothing to be crying about true right and andrew did it on another interview where he said instead of saying i'm gonna i have to go to work today say i get to go to work today yeah true instead of uh you know hey i have to go to the gym i have to go to the gym i get to go to the gym because i have two it. legs etc and i talk about that all the time like people will sit there and co complain about oh i'm so tired blah, blah blah but there's people that have that are in wheelchairs that are still going to the gym figuring it true. out there's people that wish there's people right now that wish they could go to the gym and train every day meanwhile your fat ass is sitting there complaining about it saying i'm not gonna go so um, the thing is, is that people, right, they complain about what they don't have versus being happy and blessed for what, what they, they have. do have. And I always tell Facts. people, if you got running water, you got food, you live in the United States, etc., mm -hmm. you live in a first world country, you're over here complaining to me. Allah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Like, you're you're complaining to me and you're off on fucking internet? Yeah. Shut the hell up. Well, the new religion's woke. The new yeah. religion's, that's why that people yeah. live in a world of complaining, because if you don't believe in anything, then you get your satisfaction from being dissatisfied and being able to yeah. Yeah. complain about things. And they don't want you to be grateful. They want, to be, they want you to be looking for the next thing. Yes, that's yeah, it, it's... Uh, short-term satisfaction all the time. I saw this video of this girl. She was at a, a Home Depot and the lady that was like putting in the gas said, what would you like, young lady? And she wanted a whole two-minute rant. Guess what about? About being misgendered because she was they, them. And she's like, but I'm not even, I can't believe that she would call me like a late, but like she had good intentions when she did it. And so I'm like, but I know she's happy, but I'm not sure what to feel. You know what you should feel? You should be thanking God that your life is so easy that this is even considered a problem. Yeah. The fact that you're even able True, to actually. complain about this, you should be on your knees thanking God that you're alive right now to be so privileged. Someone in Syria just got a, like an earthquake and and Tragically someone called you a nice life. young lady and Dude. you're mad about it. Privilege, <laughs> I, I, I say this on a podcast all the time, privilege is invisible to those that have it. And the thing is, is in the first world, etc. People don't appreciate what they have because a lot of people in the United States don't have passports. They've never been to a poor country. And the other thing, too, and I thank my parents for this, right? Growing up in, uh, in, in New York City in, in the 90s, right, when it was very, we didn't grow up rich. Uh, we grew up actually fairly poor. My dad was a cab driver, got hit multiple times by people, whether he got run over, robbed, etc. We were in Brooklyn. And back then in the 90s and the 80s, uh, it was a very dangerous time to be in New York City. My mom didn't work, and my dad, one time, I'll, I'll never forget, he got hit by a guy and got left there and he had to wear a cast. Obviously, he didn't want to take welfare. So what he did was he just drove the cab with a cast. And my mom would go down two stories every single day, bring him upstairs. And he wow. did this for months. Right. And he didn't have insurance. And my dad always used to tell me growing up, if I was born in the United States, I'd be a somebody. If I was born here and I, I would go to college, et cetera, et cetera. So they instilled this this uh, this appreciation in my mind of being in the United States, number one, and I have to become a somebody. There's no other way around it, right? So it made me immediately appreciate the benefits and privileges that I had because my parents always reminded me what it was like. And then I remember as a child, they brought me to Sudan one time, and then they also brought me to Egypt. And I saw how people were living out there. And that woke me up to realize, whoa, I need to stop being all the a cry baby. You, have, yeah. you know, seeing all the people crying, seeing people begging for streets, uh, begging for food on the street, etc. It really brought things home. And I'll never forget, 2005, August of 2005, I came back to the United States. I kissed the floor when we got back and I said, yo, I'm never, I'm going to look at the world completely differently. I was 15 years old. I'll never forget that. But you need experiences like that sometimes to snap you back Wake into you reality up. to realize you are privileged. You need to stop being a pussy, etc. Which is why when I see people crying or fat or, oh, I don't know where I believe, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, stop being a fucking pussy. Yeah. I'm like, yo, do you have running water? Yes. Do you have food? Yes. Do you have a family? Yes. Do you live in a first world country? Yes. Do you have the internet? Yes. You have no excuse to be a crybaby. Fact. What are you talking about? Yeah. There's people that don't even have hands, people that don't have feet. There's kids <laughs> getting blown up in Syria, like you said before. And nobody, like people think, oh, I, I, I'm mad because there's no Wi-Fi in this area. And it's crazy to me how people are so soft. Yeah. Oh, you spoke a bit about happiness and how this guy was unhappy because of because he was never never saying I'm depressed to, or whatever. Never but the reality is, and we don't talk about this enough. The reason why so many men are depressed, right? People might get mad at me for saying this. Depression, a lot of times, is a byproduct 
of your inadequacies and you being incompetent, mm. right? As a man, you're put on earth to go out and create something, yeah. okay? A man's legacy and name is typically tied to what he did while he was alive, right? Right. Correct. And when you, you know, you get a birthday and you get a death date. And in between, on your tombstone, there's that dash. What the hell did you do during that dash? Did you create a name for yourself or does no one, is no one going to remember you? Yeah. And the reality is most of you are going to die. And nobody's going to give a fuck who you are. But what I'm going to say is, can you die today and be happy with what you've created? Will people remember you? Will people respect you? Will Your people will say good things about you when you die? And the reality is, for most of you guys watching right now, the answer is probably no. We need to turn that into a yes. Okay? And when I tell people that, then that's when they snap back into reality and say, damn. I really haven't accomplished anything. And what people don't get is that as a man, you, right, your whole value comes from creating something. So if you don't create anything, a byproduct of that is, I'm sad. I'm depressed. I don't know where I am in life. That's because reality is smacking you in the face with sadness telling you you're inadequate. Go out there and do something. What the hell are you doing here? Whacking off to porn. What the hell are you doing over here? Eating yourself into the depression. What the hell are you doing over here? Playing video games all day. You're not doing anything, which is why you feel sad. You feel sad because you haven't created anything. The whole world that we're in nowadays, all these inventions, etc., it was created by men to overcome being sad. You must create something as a man to be happy. Women don't have to worry about that. Women, their pleasure comes from creating a family. Family, yeah. Right. But they're not going to want to create a family with you if you're a loser. Mm. That's just not how it goes. So a lot of times when guys are sad, it's not because I'm depressed or I'm sad. I have this mental disorder. No, you're a fucking bitch. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> but we don't want to tell people this in the West. We want to make them feel better. Consult it. Oh, go to therapy. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? You want some therapy? Go to the fucking gym. OK, make some goddamn money. Become more attractive. Take care of yourself. I promise you, you're, you're going to feel, feel a lot better than sitting here on a fucking couch. With some loser, tell me about your problems. Well, I don't know. I feel like this. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you you feel that way because it's a byproduct of you being a loser. It's your masculinity reminding you. What are you doing? What, are we going to have, is this dash going to be something? Are people going to be able to respect us at our funeral? Are people going to speak about us? Is anyone give a fuck? going to give a fuck if I die? And the reality is for most people watching this, no one will give a fuck if you die. So you need to make it where people will care and they will have something good to say about you and you create some kind of impact. Can you die tomorrow and be happy? And for most people, that's it that's a no. Yeah. You need to make it a yes. Damn, that was deep, low key. Bro, I I I bro, I got a bit tense, bro. Like you could die today and they'll forget you. And it's yeah. actually true, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the truth, man. So now yeah. you want to go get it, right? I want to yeah. go make yeah, some money, bro. man. I want to go that, do something. Good I want to go right now. create something right now. <laughs> but honestly, that's spot on. Amazing, but I, think, I, I get criticized for that yeah. a lot, saying that the gym is better than therapy. But for men, that's really the I case. I don't think therapy is necessarily bad, though. It's not a bad. A lot of people do need if you have actual trauma stuff like that. But I, I say that because it's also necessary. You can afford it. It's necessary to to be somebody of action and to do something. The best use of your time is to go and make your life better. True. Sitting down on a couch and talking about your childhood and how like I got hit. I was beat and I'm not sure you're 30. Like, why are you still talking about your childhood? The best use of your time is to do something that's going to make you better. And most often that's the gym. You're going to be tired afterwards. There's going yeah. to be long-term effects. Just to play the devil's advocate though, do you think that some people might have unresolved issues like they would need to work out? Let's say like... Even if that's true, what's a better use of your time right now? Mm -hmm. Talking about it or doing something? Yeah, but I guess for uh, in this example... Um, that person, let's say, he can't necessarily, or like, let's say when he, let's say if he goes to grind, he's just thinking about these, or in the background, subconsciously, he has these issues that he's trying but to. But you, you still think about it even when you're in the gym. That's actually what I noticed is like when you have these problems, you lift harder. You lift yeah, heavier. you lift harder. Like we that last rep, is like you're thinking about that shit, like fuck, and yeah, then yeah. that pain makes you stronger. You can use your trauma to make you a better person. Yeah, yeah no, that's definitely true. But I, I do think that definitely you're right. When you say that happiness is a byproduct of working on yourself and growth. But it begs the question. I know a lot of people who are successful, you know. There's a lot of celebrities who have committed suicide. Of course. A lot, and I, sometimes I wonder. That's like really when I wonder, like, you know what I mean? Like, this person had a lot going on for them. It's not like they, they, they were nobodies. They had a lot of people that cared for them. Sometimes I think about, like, those guys. What about them? Like, they worked a, to a themselves. Lot of them they became, achieved a lot. A lot of them became wealthy when they were young. Mm -hmm. That's another thing too. Like a lot of these guys that go crazy or whatever or do something to themselves, uh, they, they became wealthy young, which I think honestly, wh it's why sad. I think it's so important for guys, like especially in their youth, like you really have to suffer because you can't appreciate 
the sunny days if you've never been through the, the rainy. rainy days. Yeah. You can't appreciate the light if you haven't been in a dark place, which is why suffering is so important. You need that polarity to experience. Because if you've never been through any type of adversity, yeah. you're not going to appreciate when things are good. Yeah, true. That's you know true. what I mean? So like now, right? I have this uh, like a very strong semblance of like what suffering is versus what not suffering is. So I appreciate the days now a lot more than had it, let's say I had got it when I was young. And that's where it comes into where young guys, right? Let's say you make your money. I'm not saying if you're young and you become successful, you're fucked. I'm not saying that, but you need to really be a little bit more aware of the fact that you're going to have to push yourself a little bit more. You know what I mean? If you got it when you were young, what makes you guys happy? Doing Me the person? hard thing, doing the right thing. Oh. Yeah. And then I, I think the highest form of human achievement is inspiration. I don't think it really comes from money or it comes from attention or sex, stuff like that. It, it, I really find that the happiest I am, the the best satisfaction I get in life is from inspiring others. Man, me too. Yeah. I, I have it written down. Like, for me, one of my goals is just to inspire many inspire. people. That's why I see for a lot to of... reach my best potential and then help others reach theirs. Yeah. I mean, that's the ultimate goal you can have. That's creating more and that's that's adding positivity to the world. I noticed that really young too and I'm glad because... I've seen videos of you like where you're a kid where you're yeah, trying to when inspire I was people. Really young like, doing how old were you at that time? Like 13, 14? 13, 14. And you're like, like yeah, you should do you something with do your life. do something with your life and I'm 13. So like, <laughs> because that, that's... And when I would hit, stop, hit, turn off the camera yeah. and when I upload the video, I was like, yeah, like I'm just... Mm. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. And that was better. And that's why I was happy kind of being a brokey for a long time and doing those types of videos because I saw the comments, I saw the responses. People would come up to me and talk about like, though that video changed my life. Yeah. And that that meant more than any type of money. I started realizing that at a certain level, like, you know, I'm in my 20s. I need to get out of this stupid apartment in New York. I need to go create something more for myself. I need to start making money. True. I need to start prioritizing that and like get involved in this capitalistic world. I can't live in this idealistic world where you can just inspire and motivate forever. You need to go and create wealth for yourself but ultimately that's that's the best that's satisfaction it's not like the you know i bought a car or stuff like that i get a watch or you know i get to travel but that's that's a byproduct and that's all so that i can keep doing what i do what i really like more than anything is is to inspire yeah that's nice and what about you what makes you happy uh so for before it used to be i used to get great satisfaction from doing big cases when i was uh, working for the government you know i'd done like big you know, RICO cases, drug nice. trafficking cases, human smuggling, human trafficking, guns, everything. Any type of crime you could think of, money laundering, federal especially, I, I had been involved in, right? Uh, so that used to give me a lot of satisfaction, like putting away really bad people in jail uh, for long periods of time. Because I went after the worst of the worst. Murderers, child pedophiles, all these types of people, right? Yeah. Terrorists, all that. Uh, but then now, right, with, with what I'm doing now... I really get a deep sense of satisfaction from people sending me messages like, yo, I was going to you know, do something to myself and I did it, right? You changed my, my life in here. And also, this is going to be a little bit more, I guess, on the dark side, but I get a deep satisfaction from beating my competition. And when I say beating my competition, all the detractors that talk smack, sometimes I'll watch their videos just to like get reminded. This is like, I want to make sure that I create a bigger impact than a lot of these idiots yeah, because that if talk you smack could about know, us. they're right. You know? Exactly, exactly. And and my thing is, I look at it like, I'm going to add more value than these idiots too. There's three that come to mind right now that I could think of off the top of my head. Yeah, but I'll watch them. them and they talk, huh? <laughs> I said name them. Uh, uh, we, sure, Apple and Leech, Hassan and H3, they talk the most shit about us, yeah. right? Actually, that was really motivational. When I got canceled and then him and his whole team started said congrats Nico got canceled that was a fire that I really needed yeah. and every day when I don't want to stream or when it's difficult <laughs> I think about him going and I'm just I, I, I work Carter. twice yeah. as hard just to prove your fat ass wrong and, and yeah. this is this is my thing like I, I this might not be the best advice you guys could take it if you want but me personally I I look at it like I hate my enemy so much I will I, I refuse to lose and I look at it like they're in my way. They're my competition. They're talking smack. They're making hit pieces, blah, blah, blah. You took to go for problematic. All this a bunch of pussy language stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to add more value than these guys. While these guys do stupid ass commentary videos talking shit about other people, I'm going to help you guys make more money. I'm going to help you guys become more successful. And I look at it like who's getting more, more positive messages about who's impacting more lives, yeah. right? Is it me teaching you guys how to invest in real estate and save money on taxes and how to not be a fat POS? Or is it Hassan for the 20th time talking about politics like a loser? Probably us. So I'm going to continue to make better content than all these idiots that talk smack about us. That's how I look at it. Like, these guys are doing this. We're doing this. And it's funny, too, because... And they're not even good about talking about politics. They don't even <laughs> talk about what's really going on in the world. You know what uh, Lasanabi recently said? He was talking about Aiden Ross, who got inspired by Andrew Tate. Yeah. And he's now doing no fap and he's on self-improvement, stuff like that. He said, don't go down like the Sneeko alt-right pipeline and go 
go, NoFap is like some weird right wing. How is it conservative and right wing sure. to not want to masturbate? <laughs> it's incredible what woke people think. They're not even good at speaking about politics if you think that jerking off is liberal. And these are three guys also that talk smack about us, Andrew, etc. So I look at it like, same, right, man, same people, the same, yeah. the same losers, bro. So I look at it like, who's adding more value to their audience? And as long as we're adding more value than those cl ass clowns, I look at it like it's a W, and I'm going to continue because I look at it like I'm going to the gym, so I never look like Abba. I'm going to the gym, <laughs> so I don't look smooth and flat like your boy, uh, you know, Hassan, right. or not to look like a slob like Ethan Klein. And I'm going to continue to give guys content that makes them better, help yeah. you guys get in shape, make more money, more money, etc. And I look at it like whoever's giving the most value is the winner. So that's how I look at it. Like It's really a brilliant philosophy that changed my whole perspective on internet. Like I, I, I'm dead serious. I asked uh, Bradley Martin recent, recently had uh, Ethan Klein, H3 on his podcast, sitting just like this. And I told Bradley to ask him like, Ethan, what do you stand for? Because it's really true about all the people that we have common haters, of, like the people that hate Andrew and Tristan, hate Fresh and Fit, hate me. All of them. Yeah. So I asked and Bradley, and Bradley stands for they something. They don't know me yet. Like they're they're, they're, they're going to come, they're, for, they're you, gonna come for you, bro. They're going to come for you. Just be prepared. <laughs> you make any content like that's pro masculine it's and become a better man, they're going <laughs> to come, man. Hey, you're with us, though. You're with <laughs> us. This, this content Dang. is problematic. This Dang. is problematic. Sneakers, welcome, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're going to get canceled, man. You're, you're red pill, toxic, problematic, insecure, it's gonna incel. Come. But Bradley Martin, he stands for the gym and he has a positive message. And so like th there's a clear philosophy with his podcast and what he talks about. Yeah. He talks about critical thinking. So I told him, ask him, you're going to yeah. sit down with H3, ask him, what do you stand for? Yeah. He didn't answer the question. And I think that's that it, people don't talk about that enough. He just said, this is like a gotcha question. Like, what do you mean? Like Sneeko? Like he just got wiped from the internet. This is a guy. How is it a gotcha question to ask you what you stand for? I got you because you don't know what you, you don't, stand you don't, for. Because you don't stand for anything. Because you stand for nothing. Yeah. You're just there to talk. That should be be set off alarm bells for your entire audience why are you watching somebody that doesn't even know what he stands for damn yeah and that's, that's and that's the grift of the left yeah. you know what i mean they're more concerned with being politically correct and not offending people and maintaining and let's be honest here they want to maintain their liberal slash female audience and that's cool you know it is what it is because women tend to be more in the fields versus the reels but Hey, man, our biggest haters, they all have the same MO. They all look the same. They all don't hit the gym. They're not big on self-improvement, whatever. And they watch us. They're like, you guys are talking Question. alpha males. So whatever. But that's Question. what motivates me. Beating my competition, smacking them, and helping guys and inspiring guys at the same time nice. to actually become better versus watching mindless reaction videos. Question I have for both of you guys. Yeah. Um, so happiness is a byproduct of working on yourself. Do you think happiness is also a choice? Like, can we decide to is so is it something like it's it's just a byproduct if you want to be happy just work on yourself or can you also do other things to make yourself happy what do you think like is because there's some people saying there's the, you can't chase happiness it's just a byproduct of working hard and improving yourself and just uh, i mean jerking more. off makes you happy like now but then when you're done you look at the reflection of the no, black of course. screen so and i mean you like your of dumb course. Face. yeah i mean <laughs> I, I would say I mean, focus on fulfilling. things that give you a back-end pleasure right so whether it's the gym that's yeah. one thing right but of course there's you know you can have other hobbies you know whether it's maybe you play chess maybe you like uh building things chess right? is good because it stimulates your brain St it stimulates your brain right that's fun maybe you like to build certain things maybe you want to build uh, planes or you know do do the build a ship and put it in a little bottle whatever it is yeah. like uh, or maybe you're into uh, trivia or maybe you're a historian anything or maybe you constructive enjoy, or productive maybe you maybe you enjoy art you know maybe you like to make music on the side whatever it is like anything when that, I was a kid I liked origami a lot I used there to you do like some origami yeah like, it's nice so, so that's a hobby I think the biggest thing though is to not be one of these hobbyless idiots right yeah. and I'll be honest with you in the west I can't tell you how many times I've been on a date with a girl hey what's your hobbies uh, I go to the beach hang out with friends <laughs> you don't want to be like that yeah. you want to be a gen genuinely interesting person that has hobbies where you can go ahead and the other thing too why I think it's so important to be a well diversified person and have different um, hobbies and interests and be and uh, you know watch educational content is that you can go ahead and chop it up and talk to people from different demographics that they'd be like surprised like oh wow you know about this too yeah yeah I could talk about it blah 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 and as the man I'm going to give you guys this, 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 this uncomfortable truth the burden of performance is on you if you go on a date with a girl and you're boring you don't have interest you or have hobbies or whatever you don't have any charisma she's going to look at it like oh I'm not the boring one it was him mm. even though you ask her what she does for a hobby she says the beach but <laughs> the thing is is that girls they don't need to have, have anything the interesting about yeah, them yeah like girls have the privilege their face of, is the interesting part yeah, like girls don't <laughs> have to have anything interesting so Fresh does these blind dates where 
I will be blind and then there'll be a girl and she's an Instagram. Like she's just a girl. And then we need to go on a date. And then you see like this one, it's just genius because then it's really revealed that they don't have anything besides their looks. They're so used to sitting down next to somebody and then having the conversation like, what do you do? I don't know. What do you do? And then you were like, you start creating yeah. banter. You start you making the conversation. Yeah. You make it. And now that I can't see you, I'm like, okay, so what is it about you? Like, tell me about yourself. I don't know. Um, look at me and you can't look at her and then the whole thing and then you reveal it and she's actually really beautiful but then you realize there's really nothing the in there. The conversation wasn't there. And you've never yeah. had to become interesting because you're going to get validation for just what you look like. Yeah, yeah and, 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 here, and here's the other thing too before all you guys get mad and be like oh this fucked up blah blah well number one get the book Why Women Deserve Less and you'll see why but the reality is I want you guys to ask yourself like let's flip the role real quick because a lot of guys get mad at women and they're all pissed off or whatever. Imagine in the dream world right that you existed and hot, girl, hot girls came up to you and said, I'll fly you to Dubai. I'll fly you to Miami. Hey, I'll take you on a state. Hey, I got a boat in the tomorrow. We're never going to be in the podcast. Et we don't need to be here. Right? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, imagine if you got all these offers, right, to yeah. hang out with beautiful women just because you existed. What kind of person would that make you? True. Would you go to the gym? Would you go work? Would you really bust your ass and become a better person? No. Would you become interesting and learn all these certain things? No, you wouldn't. You, you really wouldn't. You have zero incentive to do so because you got attention and validation and sex from the opposite gender just for existing. So you would be extremely flaky. You'd be picky. You'd only deal with the best girls. You'd be immediately bored if a girl didn't entertain you and jump through hoops. That's the modern day woman, guys. You can't I would be probably mad believe in astrology. I'd be so bored yeah. I would make up some stars to develop my personality and, trait. And guys get mad, <laughs> but I'm saying like literally put yourself in a female's shoes. If you were able to get attention and validation and sex and everything you wanted from the opposite gender merely for existing and never having to actually self-improve yourself, would you? And the real answer is you wouldn't. Most of y'all wouldn't. Can and that's where a lot of modern women are. Do you think everything in life is transactional? To yeah. a degree, yes. yes. Yeah. Even to a degree, yes. And uh, this is the thing I was thinking about for a while. And for a while, I guess I kind of thought, like, it's a sad thing. But no, or, it's not. But actually, recently I found it's not actually a sad thing. It's just the way it is. And yeah. if anything, it's fair. Yeah. Because, you know, like, people say, like, men are only love transactionally. But I think even the, even dogs, you know, you only really like a dog because it makes you feel, yeah, it makes you feel good. It gives you attention. Yeah, it, 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 it's same reason you donate to charity. It same makes you feel because it makes you yourself. feel good exactly. Yeah. Yeah. and it's it's crazy. Even 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 like what's like quite extreme if you think about it. a mother. Like I've seen many, I know of many people who have never got support from their parents mm -hmm. or like, and they left their parents and people were like, yeah, you should have left because they never fed you. They never looked after you. So even that relationship was based on the mother, the parents providing for the kid. Yeah. And if they don't, then the kid is, is, is yeah. seemed uh, normal to leave. Mm -hmm. And it, and that's your mother, you know? So everything I, is transactional to a degree. I would, I would say like the thing that pisses guys off is that they don't understand that their relationship with women is transactional probably to the highest degree. And what I mean by that is, as a man, you must provide value. Going back to the date thing, right? If you go on a date with a girl, and let's say she's boring, and you were charismatic and charming or whatever, and if she didn't have fun, she's still going to blame it on you. She's not going to go and be like, well, I'm really kind of like a non-interesting, boring-ass <laughs> chick. You know, but I have met some fault. girls who are. But, who are, but, but very few, few girls have yeah. critical thinking skills or are going to think like that because we live in a world where we tell girls they're special no matter how they behave. So but most think, girls, if they have bad time, they have their value? Their value is the the obviously like cooking and like sex or and they're that, not even that good at that, that time it, it smells bad <laughs> and then they can't cook they're making peanut butter jelly sandwiches and <laughs> pasta like it, are they even good at what they're supposed to do the bare minimum is seen as like i'm a wifey now if she can cook once in a while and then it doesn't smell bad or she doesn't have diseases then she's wifey material in the west the bar is so low for women yeah, I feel you. Yeah. All right. The bar is low. If you could say one thing. Wait, first of all, question. You got banned on YouTube. Do you think you'd ever get banned on YouTube? I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, pro it's inevitable. some point probably. Yeah, They're on probably Rumble too. They, they stream on Rumble every day. Yeah, we're oh, on Rumble okay. as well. Rumble.com slash Fresh Fit. Rumble is going to be the future, bro. Because this YouTube is becoming anything that's like pro-masculine content. It's like getting censored. Get ready, man. Come uh, to Rumble, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. Why not? Um, but you don't um, you don't think that um, like you're not scared at all to lose the channel. You don't care at all. I mean, it's it's gonna come at some point. The way we you know we tell guys the truth about how the world really works, right? You can't even say stuff like you know why women deserve less. Like this book, right? It's a it's a catchy title, whatever. But like I go into detail, like why guys can't simp on girls in 2023 yeah. and beyond because I think modern day women have changed. Yeah, I don't think it, it means like to treat women badly. No, 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 no. Even though like the title obviously has to be catchy, but mm -hmm. I think definitely it's just about don't put them on a pedestal. Actually, I have a put it right here in the first like page and I actually literally have this because you know some guys will be like, Ooh, this is this. Yeah. it goes 
This book does not call refusing to help for this book does not call for refusing to help your fellow human if it's a woman, nor does it call for refusing to work, interact, or socialize with women in society. It is to prevent you from wasting your resources on the unreciprocated romantic pursuit of women to the point it ruins your life. Let's, let's be honest. Most correct. guys give too much and girls don't reciprocate. And girls are used to re not reciprocating. And then on top of that, there's an entire economy built upon the fact that women don't reciprocate. Yeah. Damn. Okay, if you could say one thing to the 19-year-old version of you guys, what would you say? Who wants to go first? Stop doing drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That messed up my reward system for a long time. It Actually, it makes me think about how women get to live life all not really having to work towards things in the long term. <laughs> like when I was, when I'm high, I don't really need to do anything else because I'm already happy. And so that was what I was chasing for a long time. And it was a big distraction. And, and then nothing really came of it. Like yeah. there's nothing I can really talk about. People talk about like psychedelics, like, oh, I saw a clown in the woods and a dinosaur yeah. pop. I've like, never tried uh, Adderall, but you spoke about it one time as it helped you editing. Well, that was not even a drug. That was medication. I, I, it's medication. It's, it is it is a drug, but I was prescribed it. But I, w I did pretty much every single drug besides like wow. heroin and crack. I've done everything. And that was a big waste. And th that I was chasing that for a while because I didn't really... I wasn't thinking about the long term enough. And your purpose and what you're here for. And yeah, my purpose. And I, I think a lot of that wasn't my fault because I, I was prescribed Adderall when I was like 11, 12. Uh, so I was taking amphetamines and that did mess up my dopamine system for yeah, a while. I was looking for short term uh, satisfaction and, and that messed up. Uh, but so I had to actively look and really try my hardest to go and find a bigger purpose. So at 19, it would, it would be uh, to go ignore the distractions and prepare for my life at 25. Yeah. What about you? What are you uh, at 19 years old. At 19 years old, it, that was 2009 for me. Man, I wish I had. Uh, I'm old, guys. I'm 33. Uh, 2009, I was 19. Yeah, it would have been for me like start an online business. Mm, nice. You know, I would have got back. I would have got like ahead of the curve, like with, with like you know, e-commerce brand, e-commerce, e all that stuff. Drop shipping. Invest in Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Invest. Yeah. That's, Invest that's in the common one. Yeah. Yeah. I would uh, tell my don't lose my little Bitcoin piece of paper. I had bought Bitcoin. Like back when it was fifty dollars. No way, really. And I lost a piece of paper with the code on it. No way, yes. Jesus Christ, womp, that would have been crazy. So, do you guys like invest a lot of money in crypto now? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have a yeah, I have a six figure uh, crypto portfolio, some Bitcoin, Ethereum. Oh, nice. But um, do you but go for, for all coins or is it just Bitcoin, Bitcoin Ethereum. Ethereum? Bitcoin. I keep it simple. Bitcoin, Ethereum. That's the yeah. best one. Man, Bitcoin I was, is the most I was essential. Quite heavy in, in Solana, man. I was. Really I have some Solana. Solana I have man. Solana. It's so sad that this stuff tank. But it's going up now slowly. But yeah, yeah. yeah, but the other ones are pretty much just like Gambit. shit coins. Gamb you know. But Solana had a good team. They had. They yeah, were but good Bitcoin has been the most stood the test of time. It's the most decentralized. And now you see the CBDCs that happened in Nigeria. Nigeria just dissolved their currency. The government now controls crypto when they dissolve their old do dollar bills. Whoa. So the best way to prepare for that, I think Bitcoin is going to pump once CBDCs start getting implemented by and different governments. There's and already Iran and Russia have a stable coin. Yeah, I think we're we're due for a big, big point, uh, Bitcoin pump. So start investing now, in my opinion. Do you think that will happen during this... Um I, I can't predict it, but I, I see a company, uh, I think Nigeria Essential. implementing CBDCs is a big one. And uh, a lot of people are getting red pill now and it, it just makes the most sense. It's Do you most think we're going into a big recession, depression? Or you have a lot of real estate. We are in one. We have a depression. Yeah, right we, so we're in right recession. Now. I don't think we're recession. in depression. Yeah, recession. Though. Sorry, not a depression. G GDP is In the uh, United States, we definitely are going through a recession right now. Yeah. And, and the reason why, because people know me as a real estate investor, right? I have 12 properties. But I, I tell people all the time, I have a six-figure uh, um, crypto crypto portfolio because I'm real big on being diversified. I tell guys, get in every asset class. Have your real estate. Have cryptocurrency. Have precious metals. Have uh, index funds. Stock you market. You think real estate going to crash now because of the rising interest rates? Uh, real estate market? I think some people might get the, uh, uh, they, you know, when you when they raise the interest oh, rates. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, defaulted. It, it, defaulted. so no, it's not going to crash. And the reason why it's not going to crash. They're floating is because, interest rates. What was that? You know, some of these properties, people got yeah, yeah, the interest rates are floating, going up. Floating interest rates. Yeah. So it can change midway throughout. Well, the, most Americans, right? So term. I don't know how it is here in the UAE, but most Americans get something called a thirty fixed year loan, ah, okay, which yeah. gives you a fixed rate interest. Now you can get something called an adjustable rate mortgage, yeah. which is you know what floating. you're talking about, where it switches based on the market, I and you're able to get it at a low rate, and then it switches. In some states, I don't know if it's the uh, offices or but I think it's it's only for floating I don't think you can get the a fixed 30, rate yeah you, for, you, can you can get homes. a 30 year fixed rate right only for homes and stuff. Uh, for, for yeah for homes right whether it's an investment property or not but the reason why this real estate market isn't going to crash in the United States is because there's not enough inventory we're about almost four to five million homes so you don't think it's going to crash in the United States no it's not going to crash really? no way not in the single family world no or it's not in the home market because we don't have enough houses we, there, there's an undersupply of homes mm. so since there's an undersupply of homes 
people can't even buy homes. So the market's only going to crash if there's too much inventory, yeah, I supply think some, and demand. So, yeah, but I think some people, they took out loans, with, obviously, when it was zero interest. And now their their interest rates have increased. So I think they, but they got to fix smaller. They got, they Not got everyone, though. No, well, so okay, so I know what you're talking about. So back in like 2020, 2021, yeah. etc., people were getting interest rates at like two, three, four percent. Zero, some of them. Yeah, the lowest I've ever seen is like two, two, okay. two to three. But the thing is, is that when they get these interest rates, it was typically a fixed year, a fixed thirty year. Well, okay. so you're you lock that interest rate. So people got, if anything, people are going to keep that interest rate and they're not going to refinance. Yeah. But uh, they're getting laid off. They can't pay their mortgage. That that that's definitely Dude, happening. Google laid off twelve thousand people. Yeah, no, no, no. Like of course, two weeks ago. But that's not going to necessarily lead to a real estate crash, just because yeah. you know what I mean. If anything, if people, if those homes go out, what people will do is like the banks will come in and buy them. Mm. You know, yeah. but there's but there's definitely a home shortage in the United States for single family homes. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be either way, but it's good to hear your take and your yeah, your yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because um, the single family home, which is you know three bedroom, two bath. We got four to five million so of them supply short. Is low. Supply is low, yeah. Yeah, supply is very low. So typically, so here's the thing, because I know you might be saying, well, there was a crash in 2008. Well, there's a bunch of different factors that led to the crash in 2008. Number one, they were giving loans for anything. Yeah. Like you could just have a pulse and they'll give you a home loan, <laughs> yeah. right? So that was one thing. So a bunch of people that weren't qualified to get loans got them. And then on top of that, there was an over, way oversupply of, of homes. We're talking like eight months of, of uh, inventory, True, yeah. which would mean that like it would take them eight months to sell off all the inventory, which is ridiculously high, way too many homes. And then uh, between giving out loans, too much inventory, uh, and then you had the recession, all these things work together in tandem to create, uh, you know, the housing market crash. But nowadays, ever since that 2008 bailout with the housing market, they had to come up with, it's harder to get a loan now, way harder yeah. than before. And they're not just giving you a loan for existing. So, you know, of course, people are losing jobs and they might lose the homes or whatever, but that's going to get bought out by like a Blackstone or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, but commercial is suffering a bit. Like office spaces yeah. because of COVID. What happened is like, oh, well, we need office space. People Zoom. can work from home. Zoom, exactly. So it did hurt the office space in commercial a bit. But as far as like residential, single family homes especially, that, that's, that's, that's. Well, I did a whole conver- uh, podcast with Chris Crone about this, and he owns like 6,000 plus units. And we talked about the real estate market crash. Are you buying crypto right now? Channel. What's that? Or, or what investment things are you doing right now, like in this moment? That people Real estate could, heavy. You're going heavy in real estate yeah, right now? I, I have four and properties crypto? in Miami and then another eight in Connecticut. And I'm always like looking, like most of my money, I invest into real estate. And then so I invest in my index fund as well. That tracks the S&P 500. Oh, the whole S&P 500. It tracks the S&P 500. And then and I have another one that tracks the uh, international market, the entire stock market. And then uh, and then whatever's left over, I'll invest some in And you're actively investing this right now. What's that? Right now. You're actively investing Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now. Most of my money goes into, into real estate. Because I know some people are investments. holding cash right now trying to see what's No, what's man. Happening cash like I've, I've always said like if, if i if you have too much cash like you're just taking an l because what what happens is the inflation is burning through the through the cash of course yeah but also also if, if you feel like everything's about to crash then maybe the inflation is not the biggest it, but concern. see then the issue you get you run into is where you're trying to you're time the market there. right you're trying to time the market and then you miss out on opportunities yeah. uh because you know if you're just going to try to hold on to cash time, time in the market is better than timing the market as they say so what was that like time in the market is better than timing. Absolutely. Timing, yeah, absolutely. Because it's like, oh, let me time. just try to time it. Blah blah blah. Well, I'll tell you this: the housing market ain't gonna crash. And then if you're buying in good real estate markets like Florida, Texas, etc., it's only gonna continue to get more. What expensive. about gold? Do you invest? You know, in I have gold? silver, but I, I need, I'm gonna start buying gold. I don't have gold, gold. especially in recession times. It really goes. It's up. really good. I think it's now it's, it's all 52 week high. Yeah, gold. I believe it. I believe it. Gold and people make fun of Ooh, gold. Ooh. I I think it's good to be in everything, right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I genuinely Never do. Think who says that? <laughs> there's a lot of people that make fun of people that. Yeah, yeah like it's boring. Gold. They think they think it's boring. It's like old, like because it doesn't like go up old, much. It's like an older dude thing is to like have gold and precious. Yeah, because it doesn't go up much. They're, they're like it doesn't go up much. It's not that you know. Like you get small small returns. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, so. I think it's a good it's a good hedge against inflation. It's a yeah. good like with the way things are right now, with That's everything being crazy. I genuinely think it's good to be in every asset class. But the reason why I like real estate so much is because you get cash flow, you get tax benefits, your house appreciates over time, and you get um well you get the cost segregation depreciation. There's just so many benefits in the United States at least yeah. with having real estate. I'm about to get my first one when I bought a uh, my new car. Myron called me an N word, so I'm gonna get a. <laughs> A house and start having <laughs> better assets. You don't have any uh, any real estate? No. No, I mean, I, even I need to get into it as well. Uh, Maybe it's a good time for us. Yeah. You, yeah, dude. It's it's the. You're I, only I don't in crypto. Yeah. Only. Hundred percent crypto. No, there's different. I did a couple, but no real estate yet. You do, do you have about stocks? 
Mostly, mostly crypto. I like crypto better than stocks. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I your, don't know how it performs in the UAE tax. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, real estate. Uh, real estate. But I'm gonna start looking into it because this is somewhere that I'm like looking to come into as well. Yeah, that could be UAE. smart. Yeah. yeah. I think definitely it's a good opportunity, especially with uh, whatever but in the US whatever is happening in Russia. Uh, the, all the Russian oligarchs they they're coming to Dubai. They're buying properties here. So we're actually seeing some good some good growth in our market here. That's a good sign. That's yeah. a good sign. But um. I wanted to know from both of you, you can say first, what was the happiest and saddest moment in your life? Happiest moment was, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think I've hit it yet. Really? No, okay, but from, from what's so happened. So far? Yeah, so far. A big maybe, one maybe you bought your mom a car or something. No, I need to, I need to do that. Yeah, yeah that's a big one. So I got to do that. I bought myself a car. Pretty selfish. <laughs> maybe hitting a million subs was, was a big one. Yeah. It took so long for it to happen. It took like nine years. Jesus, nine years. Maybe saddest moment was- Getting uh, deplatformed? That, that was pretty sad, but yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of moments. There's been a lot of, yeah, but I look towards the future. I don't really like, think about give, that. Give us the sad, saddest moment, Sneak. Reveal it. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> Damn, I'm joking, I'm joking. Turning this into therapy right now. <laughs> okay, no I'm about to go lift. <laughs> My man. Uh, the, the happiest, man, there's a couple of them. Uh, when we hit 1 million subscribers, because we had so many haters talking smack about us, so we're talking like 30 YouTube channels trying to destroy us, and we, we overcame so far. You Right? Um, and then, uh, when I, <laughs> I, I, when I, when I found out that I was a millionaire, I didn't realize until like months after the fact, I didn't know that I had it. Like my real estate <laughs> agent called me and said, Hey man, just so you know, your net worth is over a million. I was like, what? It's like, yeah. And that was, this was like two years How ago. How did you know months after this? As soon as it happened, I was looking like days before tracking, making because, sure. Because real estate like goes up in appreciation and down. That's true. So like, so uh, I didn't know, but he like was going through. Oh, that's account. Like, I mean, like you need to have a million in your bank account, like cash. To be no, but real estate no, is basically dude, it's the your net worth. At, okay. It's your net worth. No, but, but basically, real estate, because you can sell it at the same time. When you call them, you could have sold it right now, cashed out a million, you know? Yeah. I guess if you have, if you have like, let's say, something, but I think, yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. I yeah, know what you but mean. like, yeah. But I they mean, consider it a net worth, yeah. But the general sense is when you. It's actually funny because I have that question here. The feeling of making your first million. So, yeah, how was that feeling for you? Is you tracked it? I mean, it was bound to happen. And also, uh, Tristan promised me a party when I hit a uh, million dollars cash. That's when you said you could consider yourself a millionaire. And then I'm like, yeah, bro. So we were actually like planning out the party. And then he had to go to jail. So yeah, free him so I could have my party. <laughs> that was, but it, yeah, I saw it coming. It, I mean, it didn't really. I actually hit haven't, the same. Made, I haven't made a million dollars in cash yet. So I'm looking forward to that. Like with my own money, I'm trying to, you know, get him, get him. Come, uh, it's not even that right. much anymore. Once, when you once, think once about yeah, it. now we need five. Now we need five. It's, it's not even that much. Like you, you yeah, have yeah. a million, and then you have like a fee, and then there's tax season coming up, and then there's something. No, I don't have tax. <laughs> oh, just lucky. Yeah. This is crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Right, I don't States, have yeah. tax. That's the biggest flex Bro, of all why, time. That, that's why, like, I don't have like a million. If I had a million cash, I'd be losing my mind. I'd be like, yeah. what am I doing? But like, I own I own a couple of houses outright. I own a couple of houses. Uh, straight up, where I bought him a cash, which I don't suggest anyone ever buy a house cash. But there were certain opportunities that I only had. To, I only you had, had to, you to if I bought it, a cash. Yeah. So that that's why as well. So I own a couple of houses outright. But that's when I one of my happiest moments when I found out I had a million because it was like just a personal goal. Because I don't care about money, as you guys could tell. I'm a hardcore minimalist. Like I wear the same clothes every day. Terrible. Uh, right. Yeah, whatever if you want to you want to say. But um, but that was cool because it was a good milestone hitting a million subscribers. And then also like telling my dad uh, like, dude, stop working overtime. That was a huge one for me. This is a small personal achievement, but I told him, uh, quit your job. But he was like, hey, I got like three more years to retirement and then I'll get a pension. So I was like, all right, cool. So I paid their mortgage for them and I take care nice. of them. Good so feeling. for me, that Very was good. huge because seeing how my dad struggled throughout his entire life, like working overtime, killing himself, working six, seven days a week, yeah. right? I can't um, wait to go to my dad and just like yeah. my, my, my dad and be like, listen, like I want to start now, like paying for everything. You know what I mean? And then one of the saddest was, I would say, uh, when I had to leave uh, the government because I really didn't enjoy my job when I was working for Homeland. Why did you have to leave? So the YouTube channel started to take off. Okay. And they basically brought me in. And they're no like, way. hey, man, you got to you got to pick one Cut here. Like, shit. you're going to be an influencer. Or what the hell are you going to do here? And I went back and forth with them for like a month. I tried to like figure it out. Double but agent. Yeah. Well, I tried to like like tell them like, hey, maybe we could work this out, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, nah, like you got to like just shut down the YouTube for like a while. And I was like, damn. And the thing is, is that at that point, uh, Fresh was like quitting his like had already like quit his job pretty much. Uh, we had hired a, a guy from Chicago. Our YouTube guy was like moving. So like I had people depending on me. So I was like, I can't just walk away. So I, I left the government and it was really scary because I was like, damn, like I, I didn't expect to leave at the time that I did, but it ended up working out. It was um, a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. I ended up working out, but that was sad. Even though like, 
I would have never made as much money as I but did you enjoyed it. with the government, but I enjoyed the job. Yeah. So that was one of my saddest things was walking away from that profession. But now with the true crime channel, it lets me kind of still relive it. Be in that, be in that mode. Yeah. Cause I'm able to like talk about criminal cases and it brings back like really fond memories. Like I'll read through the court documents, explain to them. This is what, you know, when a, when an agent's interrogating you, this is what they're trying to get. Or mm. when the police are doing this, I'm able to explain it to a deeper level and people enjoy that. You guys want to reveal your net worths? Uh, mine at this point, probably somewhere around, uh, three two or three somewhere in that range nice. with, my, with my real estate and stuff yeah because i own a couple of houses outright and i don't mind revealing this stuff because i tell people this more to like motivate them so like for example i've, yeah. I've talked about this it's a journey it's it's my journey. journey and then also i tell people like so that they can understand right because if you tell people oh this and that depreciation cost segregation they're going to look at you like you're crazy so what i'll say is this when I worked for the government, I made about one hundred to one hundred thirty thousand dollars per year, right? I paid about forty thousand dollars in taxes. Jeez, yeah, right in, in the Almost U.S. Tough. But when I was my uh, last year, I made about a little over a million dollars, around a million dollars on YouTube, right, and all the other entrepreneurial ventures, right. Last year, I paid thirty six thousand dollars in taxes. Wow, less. And the reason why is because business write offs, depreciation. Cost segregation, real estate. I bought seven real estate properties that year. Whoa. Right, I invested almost all my money into real estate, and that was why I was able to cut my tax bill significantly. But I made 10x the money. So I tell people this not to be like, look at me, I'm going to flex. Rather, if you spend your money intelligently, have a business, right, a service-based business or some kind of uh, entrepreneurial venture, have real estate, it is probably the best way to hedge against inflation and also to uh, cut your taxes down. Or move to Dubai. Or you can move to Dubai. That's the other route too. This. What's your what's your net worth? I'm not sure exactly. I, I would say like around a mil, but the the creativity kit is valued pretty high right now from uh, from different investors and stuff like that. So it's hard to say because technically I'm a. Uh, the top shareholder. Of course. So yeah. I, I'm not sure exactly what. But I'm I, actually happy both of you guys revealed it. <laughs> That's actually funny. Yeah. Most people are like, you know. Dodge the question. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's good. No, I mean, I'm we broke. all have a journey. You know like $100,000. I, mean? so I, I, yeah. I do it to, to inspire people and let them know, like, you know, because I don't really show my wealth like that, but I'm happy to talk about real estate, how to invest, make money, et cetera, yeah. because I think it'll inspire them. Like, yo, I pay less taxes than a lot of people that might be watching this. And the reason why I do it, of course, legally, of course, and everything like that, but it's because in the United States, the two cornerstones of the American economy are this real estate owning a business why because if you're able to employ people you get tax cuts and then if you're able to house people you get tax cuts that is the cornerstone of the united states this is like the, the, what it is right so this is how all the big businesses all the big companies real estate investors etc they pay nothing in taxes donald trump didn't show his taxes for a reason because he pays almost nothing in taxes and he does it legally yeah. because the united states was built upon the back of small businesses you employ people, you house people, you're going to be able to go ahead and save a lot on taxes. Yeah, and that's benefits. what I want people to do. Incentivize where, it. Yeah. yeah. And even if, let's, let's say you got a regular job, right? You got a, uh, you know, a regular job, a W-2 job. You can still invest in real estate and cut your uh, your income down and pay less in taxes by doing that. That's from the, I, the guy, Robert Kiyosaki, talks yeah. a lot about that. Rich Dad, yeah. Poor Dad. You, you read that book? Of course. Are you big into books? Yeah. Both you as well? I listen to them on Audible mostly. I yeah. listen, but I get bored. Yeah, I, I do listen <laughs> to books, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Uh, do you have Rich Dad Poor Dad was great. Uh, I, re I read uh, Have It All by Chris Cron. I think that's a good book. Uh, Unscripted by MJ DeMarco really like helps you unplug for the matrix of like being a waste. Is your top three favorite books? Uh, those are some good ones, right? I, when I read books, it's typically for fi fi financial. Yeah. Like well, books on like making money, being an entrepreneur. Yeah, same. But one of I the like biggest homosexual things books like Ernest Hemingway, deep <laughs> artist stuff. My my sure. favorite thing, I think one of the most important things though, if I could leave something for your audience besides yeah. the taxes and everything else like that, because in the United States, taxes is a thing. It's huge, right? Um, the biggest thing I learned, and shout out to Robert Kiyosaki for this. We had him on our show. We talked about this. Nice. Taking earned income, right? Whether it's YouTube, a job, whatever it is. Taking that earned income, putting it into an asset. That asset pays you back some kind of dividend or real estate or whatever, or rent or whatever it may be. That's what you use to buy the liabilities. And just off that little tip right there, right? And that's what I've been doing. Avoid a lot of taxes. Yeah, I avoid a lot of taxes. Yeah. And on top of that, I get this passive income that's coming in every single month. And that's what I've been building. Like I buy more and more real estate so this passive income can come in. And I'm trying to get to a point where I want it to be my goal. And it's good to have tangible goals as well. Yeah. $100,000 a month net profit from real estate. So I know to do that, I have 12 properties now. I'm going to need probably... 50 to 70 to do that to get a hundred thousand so dollars a month net profit that's the goal or seven i say 50 to 70 doors tenants mm. right to get that and then bam i'll be happy with that right i hit my first goal which is a little uh which was 20 that came a month and i'm like all right cool i did that now i want to get to 100 and to do that i have to get this many doors this many properties so i'm working towards that and just b building up earned income 
into an asset. Asset pays me passive income. And that's how I measure my success. Yeah, I would do the, I would start an LLC or start an online business, start a, an S Corp immediately and then pay yourself out. Don't pay dividends, but pay salary. Give yourself a salary. Yeah, yeah that's the best yeah, way. It's important too. Nice. All right, guys, uh, it's been a pleasure. Do you guys have any last words before we wrap this up? Anyone who's watching this, anything you want to say? Resist the soy mind. <laughs> Resist the soy mind. Resist the uh, feminist mind. Uh, yeah, man, check us out. Uh, Fresh and Fit, yeah. right, on YouTube. On uh, uh, you, Obviously, Fresh and Fit on YouTube, rumble.com slash Fresh Fit. Get my book, Why Women Deserve yeah, Less. Good. I go into detail why you shouldn't be a simp. Um, and yeah, man, I go over like how feminism has changed the world and how, well, the first world, right? Especially <laughs> like the United States, etc. And why being a simp is actually going to hurt you as a man and why you need to focus on yourself and not girls. Woke is a virus. Look at the Facts. face of everybody from Antifa that got arrested and just look how soulless they look. Look at all their weird dyed hair and all their piercings and their sad, crusty faces that are kind of melty. They look like they were, were microwaved for 30 seconds and then they were brought back into society. You don't want to be like that. You don't want to look like that. You don't want to think like that. Believe in something that's bigger than you. Do the right thing every single day and your life will improve. My life has turned around very quickly uh, from changing my whole mindset. And you, you can hypnotize yourself with, with the positive influence, mm. with positive yeah. thoughts positive 100%. words i don't even allow myself to think anything negative anymore as soon as i have any of that like that old degenerate little stuff i just push it out there what stress uh stress is good like i, I don't think of stress as a bad thing it's that's urgency. That's that I need to do something. I feel stressed out. I'm like, what, what do I need to do? There's a reason why I'm stressed. Maybe I should go to the gym. Maybe I should work harder. Maybe I should go check up on emails. Exactly. I have to do something in order to not feel stressed out anymore. I'm stressed out because something has not been done yet. And I've reprogrammed my mind and, and I, I'm very optimistic for the future. Nice. You get to be stressed today. <sighs> That's a good thing. You have opportunities that, that stress you out. Right. Exactly. Better to be busy than to be bored. Exactly. They, yes. Michael, a coach always used to famously tell me, and I, it stuck with me to this day, idle hands do the devil's work. Mm. Right? Or in this case, shaitan. So, yeah, man. you get, get out there, guys. Get busy. Make more money. Go to the gym. Take care of yourself. Prioritize yourself first, and you'll be amazed at how that will make your life easier. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much, bro. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome to the Cancel Club. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Toxic incel, alpha male. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, check it, check them out. Obviously on all socials. Uh, leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. Appreciate you guys for sticking to the end. Take care. Peace.